So, welcome back. I suppose you're going to follow me around this entire trip. Yep. That's what I'm here for, Mr. Rector. Well, I certainly hope Dexter's private plane was able to shake any pursuers. It would be nice to only have to think about my job for a change, rather than being attacked. You worry about your job, sir. I'll take care of the rest. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you are now the person I trust most in the world, naturally. I'm going to treat you like utter cack. The woman you're investigating in Paris is Caroline Alphonse. I sent her dossier to your phone. I've also sent the info I promised on the Mobius theory. So I've got new projects. Right. However, do I also have new... Please don't blow my eardrums out. I did fish, I did. I had a chance to look at the rule book and I can say, yep, that's the same book as I've got in PDF, basically. Haven't yet had a chance to go through the errata and uh, pull that out, but it, it's nice. I'll tell you what, it's very nice. They have done a good job with that. So. We are in Paris. So, obligatory look at everything. The furniture is entirely modern, even if it does have a hint of classic style. I love him so much. He's so, so horrible to everybody, including me. Sudden thought, let's turn that to not being on. Right. Oh. And Fishy, I have just seen what you shared in Discord. And yes, yes, please. A stack of Cthulhu coins, please. Right. Okay. The barista. He has an elaborate neck tattoo. How can you tell? You're over there. And you've got your back to him. There's a counter for adding cream and sugar to your coffee. Okay. Four coffee cups, I suppose. <laughs> Parisians love their coffee, and it's usually excellent. I'm sat here drinking tea. Okay. Plants are real and not overly gaudy, which is more than I can say for most of the tourists staying here. You think his brief on the voice acting was just utter contempt for everybody in humanity? Yeah, fish. Don't don't suggest that because yeah, Drew, yeah it's a, a cheap elder sign necklace made out of those coins. Yeah, I could cope with that. There's something significant about Captain Walker that I'm missing. I need to see if he has an historical pattern, the way Senator Markham does. Historical? I can say it, can you? Mr. Walker? Yes, Mr. Rector. Okay, let's dig a little deeper. Tell me about your time in the army. What do you want to know, Mr. Rector? How old were you when you joined? Twenty. I knew I wanted to join the military, but if I finished college first, I could enlist as an officer. So I did. I enlisted as a second lieutenant right after graduation. Is it just me or did he just admit to min-maxing his uh, military career? How long were you in the military? Ten years. Why did you leave the military? I spent the last 18 months of my service training foreign armies to disable protesters. Their own people. I couldn't do it anymore. It's getting really bad out there. No worse than it's always been. No, trust me. It's worse. Uh-huh. Definitely galloping towards some kind of apocalypse, aren't we? What did you study in college? I have a BA in military history. Beth? You said you were from Indiana. Did you grow up there? Yes, I grew up in a small town. 
didn't leave it until I went to college. You've never heard of an agency called Frita? Not until you took me there. I've made a few phone calls. None of my buddies have heard of them either. They seem to excel at staying under the radar. So, I take it you're supposed to identify a woman who might become Senator Markham's wife, and this is somehow tied to a Roman emperor. I don't suppose you'd care to enlighten me. <laughs> Am I going to trust him or not? You see, he has been quite open about his background. So I'm thinking it would only be polite. Oh, what the hell. Here's what I know. So, Senator Markham is supposed to be Augustus. And if he marries the right woman, he'll become president and save the global economy? If you take the Mobius theory seriously, yes. Or at least, he has that potential. Do you trust the Mobius theory? It seems absurd, but my... Let's just say I can't entirely dismiss it. Thank you for telling me. Probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. You told me because you know you can trust me. And you can. I don't trust anyone. Yes, sir. Hello, Mortiane. Um... I haven't had any idiotic statements from you. I've just had a why is my internet freaking out? But you are very welcome this evening. Tell me about your family. I have one sister. She's married and lives in Ohio. And your parents? They're still living. Um, okay. What about a wife or a girlfriend? I haven't been in one place long enough to have a relationship. Huh. I don't suppose you have any more brilliant jokes. Hell yeah. What's brown and sticky? Do tell. A stick. It's not really funny, is it? Ouch. Okay, this guy appears to have a bottomless supply of crappy jokes. In the jokes we Sing to the English beat. <laughs> Ouch. It's okay, Mortiane. I think possibly it was saving you from yourself, but either way, you're, you're very welcome here. Did you hear about the Buddhist at Yankee Stadium? No. He asked the hot dog vendor to make him one with everything. Um, yes, I see. Tough crowd. No, he's Malachi, the uh, lead character, and I think he may have been beamed in recently from the mothership. He's clearly not human. Why were the journalists all gathered around the crater? What crater? Uh, it's just a hole in the ground. Doesn't matter. Of course it matters. <laughs> it really doesn't. Fine. Why were the journalists all gathered around the crater? They were hoping for a story that was a little meteor. I see. Are all these jokes of yours word puns? Pretty much, yeah. Do you have any more? Why was the skeleton lonely? He was bony. No, that's not right. He was skulking? Nope. Nice try, though. He was lonely because he had no body. Oh god, that's pathetic. Great, isn't it? What did the pate say to the stuck-up filet mignon? I wait breathlessly for the answer. What do I look like? Chop liver? Ouch. <laughs> like that one, did you? <laughs> oh my god. If you go long enough, Malachi actually laughs. And welcome back, Fishy. That's all for now. As you say, sir. Right. Have a look at the barista. Modern style, but worn. Non prescription thinks they look cool, style conscious, live, but not well off, careless about his looks. Nothing about that says careless about his looks. <laughs> so, this is an act accurate character portrait, is it, Mortier? Yeah. Student. Skull tattoo I've openly displayed on his neck. In a gang, obsessed with death, symbol has meaning to the wearer. Well, he just looks so ungang. So I think he'd break. 
possibly obsessed with death. But those glasses say otherwise. So, personal significance? Buff hands, small cuts. Was in a fight, participates in extreme sports, hurts his hands making coffee. <laughs> um, well, if he hurt his hands making coffee, there'd be burns. Again, really don't see this guy getting into fights. So, extreme sports. Which is still a bit of a reach, to be honest. Strong, wiry muscles. Really? Okay, I'll take your word for it, Malachi. Gym rat, male model, or active in sports. Well, if he's an extreme sports nut, then extreme sports. Though male model would be my next guess. Drata Cup, in case you haven't noticed, someone just hosted you. Say thank you. I will indeed. I will say thank you to Nightbites. And indeed, hello to Nightbites. How the devil are you this evening? Okay. A student and daredevil. The barista does some manner of extreme sports and his tattoo has personal meaning to him. Well, I'm glad I went through all the trouble of analysing him. Right. So... Bibliothèque Nationale de France. La Belle Eiffel. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Malachi Rector, and this is my associate, Mr. Walker. We're here to see Caroline Alphonse. Please, come in. I am Brett, house manager for the Alphonse family. I received a call from the consulate that you were coming, but... I'm afraid you must be disappointed. Caroline and her father are away for the weekend. However, I am at your service, monsieur. Hmm. Thank you, Brett. Yeah, uh, you're not sus enough, are you, mate? What did I have on here? Oh, yes, the files. Let's actually have a look at this woman I'm supposed to be investigating. And, in fact, on David. Okay, daughter of wealthy businessman Henri Alphonse, Caroline's descended from both the Capetians and the Bourbons. Determine if her life pattern fit it, fits that of Livia Drusilla. Right, I have no data on her as yet. That's helpful. He really doesn't sound like a Brett, does he? Doesn't even sound like a Brett on. Okay, Mobius theory. Here's the science stuff. First hinted at by Greek philosopher Paramedes and developed into a comprehensive metaphysical theory by a medieval monk Benedict de Montfort. Montfort's, tr uh, Montfort even. Montfort's treatise on the subject was a hidden work, for it would certainly have been considered heretical by the church. To be fair, in the medieval era, most stuff was. His work was lost and rediscovered and eventually ended in the hands of 1920s genius German scientist Dr. Wilhelm Rorick. Rorick fled Germany when the Nazis rose to power. Sensible man. Ended up working for the British. He was the founding father of the modern science of Mobius. Mobius theory as history has defined patterns which repeat themselves over and over. Space-time is not linear in the fourth dimension. Okay, somebody wants to screw my head back together. Energy patterns which play out in one moment of time ripple or echo out across the fourth dimension, reoccurring in other periods of time. The technology of being able to actually identify these energy patterns on the particle level is still primitive, but more progress has been made on the research side, that of recognising and cataloguing the patterns. Six modern governments have Mobius groups, the US, Britain, France, Germany, Israel and Russia. There are also rogue Mobius organisations. The alleged aim of most of these groups is merely to re-recognise patterns and thus be able to provide intelligence on what is likely to happen next. But manipulation and attempted interference in the patterns does occur. Knowledge of Mobius is top secret, rigorously kept off the web and out of mainstream universities. It's extremely dangerous. It's also bonkers. <laughs> yes. 
I need to find out who Captain Walker really is. I've started this dossier. Okay. So, yes, X Special Forces. We have 10 of 11 data points. So we can do an analysis of him. See if we can narrow it down a bit. Unmarried at 31. Oh, bless him. Okay. Captain Roderick Butler, British officer in the UK Special Forces. Never married. Sir Galahad, never married and is known as being entirely chaste and virtuous. Sir Martin of Tours, as a man of the cloth, he never married. Well, that means nothing. Sir Thomas Hardy did not marry until the age of 37. Well, he did get married, but... Yeah. And... Not so sure about him because he wasn't actually a soldier. I think we're aiming for the military here. Right. Robert E. Lee. Several siblings, including at least three sisters. Nope, David's only got the one. King Richard I. Had three brothers, three sisters, and two half-sisters. Again, no. Joan of Arc. Fabulous, famous, fabulous? <laughs> fabulous female soldier. And patron saint of France, who claimed to be led by visions from God. Several siblings. No. And Edward VIII? Uh, really, no. Grew up in a small town in Indiana. A small town in outside Oxford. That's a possibility. Was raised in a nunnery. That's not a town. Grew up in the small town of really Sambathali in modern day Hungary. Cross actually, so I can see what they're. Sorry, brief rearrangement of monitor two there. <laughs> hey, Galahad might have been loosely based on several real people. But yeah, I'm kind of inclined to lop him out as well. I have. Um... I kind of want to lop out St. Martin of Tours. It's purely based on... Well, his patron saint of soldiers, I suppose. Just based on the fact I can't pronounce where he was born. That's Roderick Butler again. And Dr. Willem Rorick. Fled Germany in 1932 when the Nazis rose to power. Left the army after losing faith in his mission. Possible. Joined the army at 20, served for 10 years. Joined the army at 22 after graduating from university. That fits. Good Samaritan, willing to go out of his way to help others in need. Provided intel on the Nazi party during World War II and also aided several defectors of the Nazis flee to flee and gain asylum in England. So, yeah, that comes under Good Samaritan. Did many, chari many charitable works with the church. The most famous legend about him said he dreamed he tore his cloak in half to share with a beggar who was revealed to be Jesus. He dreamed it. I'm a lovely person in my dreams. Who are you? It's Henry Morton Stanley. Travelled aboard extensively. Okay, fair enough. Born in Wales, travelled to the US and became an explorer, most known for his travels in Central Africa and the Congo. Yet yeah, currently, it is kind of looking like this guy is a major candidate. But I can't finish the analysis yet. <laughs> exactly, Fish. Let's just save this, shall we, children?
Right, let's have a look. Those doors are exceptional. The house is well maintained. The mirror appears to be broke, but I should take a closer look. If it's broke, don't fix it. No, wait, hang on. A rock, surely. The clock looks genuine, but I should analyze it. Uh-huh. Okay. This is a terrible forgery. I can see the seams of the plastic frame under the gold paint. Horrendous. Oh dear. Poor Malachi's not going to have a good time in this room. It's a genuine antique long case grandfather clock. 19th century. <laughs> Surely linguicidal. It's wonderful furniture, isn't it? So ter terribly understated. It appears to be a Chinese gold urn. Yes, you can, we can already tell how impressed you are. It's gold leaf, and the urn itself is a modern replica. Tacky. Aside from the occasional mispronunciations, I love the performance, but I just wish they could have got a Brit to do it. That appears to be a Chinese Ming vase. Uh-huh. Ikea? It's a fake, and not a very good one. I can only imagine that the people who live here don't actually pay any That's attention. That's an impressive piece of sculpture for a sitting room. It looks like Amadeo Modiani. God, 20 feet he can spot that. The signature is wrong, and on closer inspection, the work is hasty. This is a fake. Right, place your bets. Those kids. are modern ceramics. Nothing special. Oh, they get off because they're not pretending to be something else. The sofa and chairs are 19th century Italian. Good pieces. Okay. The furniture is just as it appears to be. They're sturdy pieces, but not particularly rare. My god, he's actually letting them off. The globe looks like a 14th century antique. I can't be sure, though, without studying it closely. <laughs> Slimy fiend, it may possibly be. The guy has done a lot. This isn't a 14th century globe. It's a knockoff. Not even a very good one. Dear oh lord. He's just pulling this entire room to pieces. Those books appear to be old from a distance. Uh huh. Even the books, Malachi. Reader's Digest Concise Editions. First editions. Some huh? of them quite fragile. The books are authentic. My god. Something real. That appears to be an Empire Mantle Clock. A fairly valuable antique. I should take a closer look. See if I can break it. Hmm. That black oh. lacquer is modern, and the gold is fake. It's a forgery. Oh dear. That mirror looks like a remarkable piece, but I should get closer. Go on then. The mirror is Swedish Rococo, oh. dated to the mid-1700s, made by Niklas Meunier. Very nice. Okay, I'm just trying not to faint that something like that is ill. That fireplace is original to the house. Very nice. Thank God he didn't declare that a fake. That's a burled wood cabinet. Fair enough. Learning all sorts of games. An 18th century burled wood cabinet. The decorations indicate it was made here in Paris. It's genuine and worth at least five grand. Okay, so we do have a mixture, although most of this shit is faked. Let's have a look at the butler. He says he's the house manager. I suppose that's something like a butler or a PA. Hmm? 
Brett the butler. Sweat on his brow, nervous hot flush, or ran to answer the door. I don't think this guy runs anywhere. And if I were in the room while Malachi was ripping it to shreds, I would be nervous. I know. Shifting eyes, something in the room's distracting him. He's got an eye twitch. David's presence gives him butterflies. <laughs> Hmm. Something in the room is distracting him. Yes, Malachi, wondering I'm going fake, fake, fake. Oh, that's real. Fake. Hands in his pockets, trying to hide poorly groomed nails, hiding something in his pockets, subconscious tell trying to hide something in the room. Oh, you do own this game, Slimy. It's really fun. It is great fun. It's very cinematic. That's where the story is it's the graphics could be better um but it's a kickstarter game entirely crowdfunded and it's got a great story to it i just don't trust this guy <laughs> as far as i could comfortably spit him brett is very nervous about something in this room he wishes to remain hidden or secret that would be the entire freaking room then okay shall we rip him to shit my shadow. He looks a little uncomfortable in these posh surroundings. Right. Now, do we go straight for the kicking in the teeth? Or do we open with one of the requests? I have a feeling he has. See, I don't... This is, has been long enough that I can't remember the specifics, which I am so happy about. Do you know what I find fascinating about this room? What is that? The astounding number of fake antiques. How long have you been stealing from the Alphonse family, Brett? I... It's not true. Come now. These aren't your ordinary knockoffs. These are fakes meant to replace very specific and valuable pieces. You've been having the fakes made and replacing them one by one. I don't suppose anyone in the family is smart enough to realize it. No, I... I do it for Madeline's sake. Henri cheated her in the divorce. She got almost nothing. She needed my help. Carolyn knows about it and she approves. But not Henri. Please, do not tell him, monsieur. He will throw me out and make sure no one will hire me. I may be able to hold my tongue. But you'll need to be much more accommodating. Oui, monsieur. Anything. Uh-huh. When in doubt, blackmail. Tell me about Caroline Alphonse. She is very special, intelligent, beautiful, and kind. She is the creme de la creme in every way. Really? You sound extremely fond of her. Tell me about Caroline's father, Henri. Henri is a very important man. But you must know this already, eh? Exceptional businessman, doting father, pillar of the community, etc., etc. Is that about it? So you say, monsieur. I'm sure you know best. Ooh, really? I want to know where Caroline is and when she'll be back. Caroline won't be back until Monday night. She did not tell me where she was going, but... I had the feeling it was a lover's rendezvous. One she was not looking forward to. Oh. I'd like to see Caroline's room now. Very well, monsieur. I will take you there. Presumably, if I ask him that before I basically kick him in the head with the fake antiques, he won't have it. Wow. Subtle understating. Uh, for those who weren't in, by the way, right at the tail end of last session, the uh, chauffeur taking these guys to the private plane to get here swapped out Malachi's Xanax presumably for placebos so this is going to be interesting I was thinking exactly the same thing fish and I've got a bigger flat than you I think right let's have a look that's an exceptional mural it's rather good isn't it that head looks Victorian, but it's not a very attractive or valuable piece. I wonder why she keeps it. Why 
it, she presumably has an entire room for her clothes. Hello. It's a book about the Paris catacombs. Caroline must be interested in the subject. Okay. Caroline has a degree in economics from L'École Normale Supérieure de Paris. That's a prestigious university. I will take your word for it, mate. But we now have something on her, at least. It's a book about the pen. Oh, okay. Still the same book, huh? Come on. Let me come. You. Not here. For all I know. This room could be bugged. I would adore a room this size, Slimy. I, uh, yes, please. This room has a remarkable view of Paris. Fantastic. These are all current event and economic magazines. Caroline must have an interest in politics. She does rather, does rather bode well for the whole Livia Drusilla thing. I don't need to take those magazines with me. Spools. Wow. Just looking at the floor. It's, come to my streams, look at the decor. Not the first time. Caroline's bed looks undisturbed. Maybe she has a somebody to make it for her. That dresser is one of the better pieces in the house. There's nothing in there except women's clothing. That's Don't it. even go there. <laughs> That's excellent work. I didn't even notice the seam. Okay. Nice. I need the combination. It looks like it's six numbers. Okay. Perhaps a date. Right. Um... Date significance to Caroline, possibly. I do have some more searches I can do. Right. Uh, in politics, degree. Yes. I already know I'm trying to match Caroline to Livia Drusilla. I just need to see if she fits the pattern. Fair enough. So, has an interest in politics. That is a match. Has a degree in economics from an elite Parisian university. Well known for having been an intelligent and savvy woman. I'm inclined to say that's a match. But I haven't got enough on her yet. Yeah, that mural is impressive, isn't it? Okay, I need information. Because I literally have no idea. Um... Can I do a search on them? Well, I'm thinking of Benedict de Montfroy and Wilhelm Rorick. This biography is very basic. According to the Mobius info from Dexter, Rorick was the founding father of the modern Mobius theory and worked for the British. That narrows it down. Hmm. I haven't heard of Montfroy. Must be information about him somewhere. I love the idea that there's no information on the internet. Okay. You need a date. Let's have a look around. Date of graduation, maybe? Caroline has a degree in economics. Yeah, I know. I don't need to take those magazines with me. These are all current event and economic magazines. Oh. Caroline must have an interest in politics. Okay. Not here. I wonder what Walker thinks of this Parisian mansion. He can't have been exposed to many places like this in the army. Well, you're not really snobby enough, are you, dear? Yep, nothing else in here. Hmm. Let's have a chat.
That's all for the moment. Oui, monsieur. Maybe not then. Right, so we need a date. We don't have a date yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lord. When in doubt, Malachi Rector. Slay me. That's the lead. Yeah, when in doubt, let's go to the library. Oh my god, it's the archives. Run. It looks like that book drop is for the archives. I bet they have some fascinating historic documents in there. I hope so. There's nothing in the book drop. Okay. Those computers appear to be for public use. Good, good, good. There's a post-it note on her monitor, but I can't see what it says. Ah, oh, hello. Whoever was drinking that coffee wears a vile shade of orange lipstick. <laughs> That's all shades of orange lipstick, surely. I don't have any use for those dregs of coffee. This is dregs so wonderfully. Okay. This is the famous reading room of Richelieu. It's quite beautiful. The main library is much more modern in appearance. Okay. Let's have a chat with the librarian. The head librarian, I presume. She has an interesting fashion sense. Go on, then. Now you want to. Oh, dear. Cold, disinterested eyes. Not attracted to me. Prefers blondes. Hates British accents. How would you know you're not using one? Resents being interrupted at work. Probably resents being interrupted at work. Possibly. But I've got no real... Orange lips, trying to draw attention to her lips. Forgot what colour her clothes are. Zero fashion sense. Got to draw attention to her lips, maybe? Tense shoulders. Hates this music. Uptight person. Bald enforcer. Over-exercised and strained her muscles. She looks uptight from that pose. Bright, passionate colours. Cheerful person, sexually frustrated or colour blind. She's not cheerful, looking at that face. She's what happens when your parents tell you don't pull that face, the wind will change and you'll be stuck with it. Oh, was he in The Walking Dead fish? Slight hand, drink, hand tremor, coffee drinker, low on caffeine, carpal tunnel syndrome, has <laughs> a fear of foreigners. Ah, uh, fair enough, fish. Hmm. Old and disinterested. Maybe she does prefer blondes. Oh god, I was right. An update by the book librarian with a caffeine addiction who's desperate for a man, but definitely not for me. Uh-huh. Well, just as well I know a good-looking blonde, isn't it? Chat. Excuse me? Yes? May I help you? Right. I'm looking for information on Caroline Alphonse. Newspaper articles, a biography, things of that nature. If you mean the current Caroline Alphonse, she's much too young to have a biography. But there should be clippings from the press. Take uh, computer number two at the table over there. I'll send you what I find. Thank you. All right. Do you have any information about Benedict de Montfroy? Let me look that up. There is something in the private archives, but access to that material is by invitation only. I'll pay. What's the fee? There is no fee. 
You must apply for a special grant and demonstrate the need for access. The process takes weeks. Would you care to fill out the form? No, that won't be necessary. Damn French bureaucracy. Is there a place to get coffee around here? Unfortunately, no. I wish there was. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Yes, he makes thanks for your help sound like fuck you too. I think I know whose coffee this is. I'd like a closer look. I get the distinct impression, Slimy, that this guy has basically done a bit of everything, so the odds are pretty good that he's done something that we've played, various people have played. She's being a pain. Right, let's take the computer and look up Caroline, and then we'll see what we can do about getting information on Benedict de Montfort. Caroline was engaged to a 43-year-old man when she was just 19. Okay. That's a good start. Um, engagement's unexpected, but the couple have been quietly dating for a year now, enjoying their privacy. They're thrilled about planning their wedding for the spring of 2000, 2013, following Alphonse's graduation... Oh, right. Hang on. Well, why aren't they married then? To so, hang on. So she just turns 19 on the 3rd of June. And this is 2011. So she was born in 1992, unless my maths is completely abandoned. So possibly, 3rd of the 6th, 1992. I think. Hmm. Caroline's parents divorced when she was still a teenager. Oh, great. Hmm. So... They developed, divorced on the 20th of August, 2008. Interesting. Oh, Caroline's fiancé called off the engagement. I wonder why. Oh. I'll take a photo of these in case I need to reference them later. Good. I suspect we're going to. Yep. We are looking at big age gaps. I mean, it's not unfeasibly big. Right. Have. First engagement was broken off after only a few months in for personal reasons. Her first marriage ended in divorce. That is not a match. Her parents divorced over her father's infidelity. The limited records on Livia's parents, Marcus Livius Drusus Claudianus and Orphidia, make no mention of any divorce. Not a match. Beautiful young woman, she was the commercial face of a cosmetics company for a year. Uh, that is. We know that her descent is correct. Engaged at 19. That's a match, the fact that it broke off. Still don't quite have enough on her yet. Exactly. It's you know it's it's a to each his own situation, isn't it? Right. David.
I need you to flirt with a librarian for me. Distract her. Uh, sorry. My job description doesn't include being pimped out. I didn't ask for you to sleep with her. Just flirt with a woman. You don't just flirt with a librarian. I'll need some reason to approach her. You're horny. Not that reason. <laughs> Give me a good reason or forget it. <laughs> um. <laughs> coffee. It's got to be coffee. And apparently the only way to get coffee is to go back to the hotel. I love points and clicks. Right, let's have a look at the coffee cup. The orange lipstick on that coffee cup is familiar. There's just enough left in the cup for me to get a sample. Okay. The orange lipstick. Sample in your phone now, dear. Okay. Huh. Oh well. Let's I go. I suppose I could buy a coffee for someone else. Yeah. Un café, s'il vous plaît. Un moment. Three euros, please. Merci. <laughs> Thank you, Fish. Point and clicks for Wolkenstein. Yes, I can see that. Right. Let's see. So that's my used coffee cup. For me. It's rather tan. It definitely has some cream in it. Greetings, Dav. Hope you're having a good evening. It tastes sweet. Oh. Far too sweet for my palate. It's been in the bin, Malachi. Really? Definitely at least two sugars. <laughs> yes. Reckon he works with uh, Lovelace. Right. Uh... Oh, right, that's the cream. That's cream. Yes, thank you. I know that's cream. It says that's cream. That's uh, looking about right. I think the coffee is correct now, but perhaps I should dress it up a bit. Oh, no. It's going to have to be, isn't it? I suppose these are for making shapes in the foam on your coffee. How unsanitary. <laughs> go for it. Let's go for the totally tragic. Oh well. This should appeal to a lonely librarian. Okay. <laughs> well, I have now got a cup of coffee with apparently no lid. Right, let's see if this will uh, float her boat. You know, listening to the music, it just has big signs up saying, same person did this and gave your night. Right. Here's coffee, go flirt with her. I need her password. I need you to distract the librarian. Give her this coffee and be friendly. All right. Since I haven't just beamed in from the Starship Enterprise. Oh, 
Okay, so we're glossing over exactly how friendly he's being. Good, 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 good. No need for that. There we go. Thank you kindly. Eiffel 88. It's good to know they practice good data security around here. <laughs> Get at the archive, shall we? Thank you. Monfoy. There. Now to see if it's delivered. Thank you very much. For me, it for me. Abbot Benedict de Montfort was the abbot of one of the largest monasteries in France. His intellect was beyond all other men, and it was said he could remember the exact details of anything he'd seen or read even decades later. Records and accounts from his monastery portray him as a cruel and exacting man plagued with demonic attacks. Ain't he bells? His journals recount terrible headaches and what modern medicine would identify as seizures, which he suffered in private. Monastery records show his health improved in later years, rather than declining with his age. He worked diligently as a scholar, but his work was never made public, even after he was burned at the stake along with his close associate, saint Armand. Hello. This Armand. Got it. It's just... Books are just things to you, aren't they? Let's see if I can look up the other name. Since apparently this place is Google proof. Good. I just need to pick it up. Smythe Jonathan, famous medieval knights. they talking about Saint Armand so he was one of many knights of the Crusades praised in period ballads but is most noteworthy for his long friendship with and role as personal protector of the Abbot Benedict de Montfroy when Armand retired early from fighting in the Crusades rather than return home to either his family's farm in France or his wife he took up guarding the monastery where de Montfroy presided. Both were burned at the stake years later, according to medieval court documents, yet saint Armand's skeletal remains were found and interred in the Paris catacombs, leading to speculation that he escaped this fiery fate. Hello. Right. I wonder why saint Armand was so loyal to Montfroy. It couldn't have been for money. Montfroy was a mere abbot. This says he's buried in the Paris catacombs. I'd like to see that. David just teleported over. Got it. I have anything to say about the monkey? It's a page on Benedict de Montfroy from the Paris archives. Okay. Right. You're done. All right. It's strange having someone follow me everywhere. But given what happened in Cairo, I don't have much choice. Yeah. I mean, you are being hunted by assorted ninja. Right. She had pictures about the catacombs. A book about the catacombs, sorry. Mr. Rector, come in. Thank you. Butler have anything to say. Edition. Ah, yes, he does. I 
Okay. How did Henri avoid paying Madeleine a divorce settlement? The papers indicated that he'd been unfaithful and violated the prenup. I do not know. Madeleine said he made it look like he had no money. He must have hidden it. But Madeleine's lawyer was unable to prove such a thing. Hmm. It may have something to do with Henri's business partner, Etienne. I do not trust that man. Ah, hello. Tell me more about Etienne. He is Henri's business partner, a very sharp man, but I do not like him. The way he looks at Caroline, it is not right. Oh, hmm. Fancy your chances, sir. You make Caroline sound like quite the paragon. But I read that her fiancé broke off the engagement. Do you know why? I do not gossip about the family, monsieur, but that man, he was an idiot. <laughs> Uh-huh. Did you know Caroline's mother, Madeline? Naturellement. I have served the family for 15 years. I was here when Madeline was still in the house. She is a beautiful and gracious woman. Okay. Sounds like you quite liked Madeline. Is that why they divorced? Ridiculous gossip. Oh, but there was gossip. Uh-huh. When Madeline left, you stayed with Henri. You prefer him, do you? She is not able to pay me, or she would have taken me with her, monsieur. I told you she got almost nothing in the divorce. I believe that's all I'll need from you, Brett. Oui, monsieur. Let me know if you need anything else. Sir, good to know that you don't gossip about the family, though. It's nice that you say that. Right. Let's have a look at our options for the safe. Uh, let's start with that one. Eh. Um. Third of June, nineteen ninety two. That's not it. Uh, six. Okay. Um, but this is an American game. Yeah, okay. Huh. I don't need to take those mag. No, you don't. Fair enough. Right. So she was definitely born in 1992. And yeah, the third is her birthday. She was due to graduate in 2013. When did her parents get divorced? Hi, <laughs> cheers, Dev. <laughs> right, so twentieth of August two thousand and eight is another option. Really? Yeah, okay, let's have a look at the twentieth the eighth, two thousand and eight. Really? That did it. Yes. I'm impressed. So you're a code breaker too? Hardly. I'm just impressed that they kept up the uh, European date format, to be honest. If Caroline has any secrets, they'll be in that safe. Now I just need to open it. Okay. Hide the bomb. The 
The date on that note is this weekend. That must be where Caroline is staying. I need to see her in person. Oh, and she's staying with Etienne, is she? That's an accounting ledger. I wonder why it's in the safe. Okay. Gimme. The ledger is for the family's finances. Caroline appears to be very involved in the running of the estate. These numbers don't look good. I need to speak with Caroline. Okay. It's a letter to Caroline from her ex fiance. Huh. Since learning the true state of things, I must break off our engagement. You're a lovely girl, but we both know that there are certain practicalities to the arrangement that I need, and you. I wonder what provide. practicalities her fiance is talking about. Was it related to virginity? Infertility? Scandal? Money? Well, that narrows it down, doesn't it? Okay. Let's steal the business information. Take it all. Look at that Paris catacomb. It's a book about the Paris catacombs. Caroline must be interested in the subject. We can go. I've gotten everything I can from this room. Yes, you did. I can see why Dexter considers you a prime asset. What do you mean by that? A prime asset is someone of military or political importance. Someone who has a unique skill. Someone worth protecting at any cost. Hmm. I'm not sure I'd like guarding a person like that. Someone has to. Let's go. I have such a wonderful little bromance going. <laughs> They are sweet. Right. Do I don't have, have anything to ask him at the moment. Oh. Okay. Right. Let's go to La, Ch La Chateau. Le Chateau even. The country house. Seriously? Wow. Okay. I've never been partial to oddly shaped shrubberies. <laughs> The lanterns are a romantic touch. And I can steal it. I don't it. think I need a lantern. <laughs> oh my god, fish. The Munchkin CCG's all world has an elvish impersonator card. Ow! This place is exceptionally private. It seems to cater to VIPs who don't want to be found. Uh-huh, and yet you have. It's a pleasant enough day for sitting outside. And poor old Walker's not allowed in. I've never been partial to... He looks particularly ominous in this pastoral setting, doesn't he? Pastoral. Yeah, pastoral. Caroline Alphonse. Another lovely young woman with an impeccable pedigree. But is she Livia Drusilla? I don't know. Let's have a check. Sharp, unfriendly expression. Distrust men. Cold, business-like person is thinking of something unpleasant. Tall, straight, tall posture. Proud and regal. Lower back problems. Uncomfortable in this place. Yeah, and she's got that whole regal thing going. Closed off posture. Very private person trying to stay warm. Likes the feel of her sweater. <laughs> private person. I think. just doesn't have that whole cold thing going and I don't think she distrusts men been engaged at least once possibly let's see oh. she is cold and business like yes proud private and business like she is not prone to displays of sentiment and unlikely to divulge secrets easily David Mademoiselle Alphonse? Oui? I'm Malachi Rector. Perhaps someone from the American Consulate told you I'd be getting in touch. Oui, I did receive that message, but I did not realize it would be so soon. How did you find me? 
Oh, it wasn't so difficult. May I join you? Very well. What can I help you with? Okay. Tell me about yourself. Me? I have no amusing stories to tell. My life is my family and my family's business. That is all. That doesn't sound like an exciting life for a young woman. Exciting is overrated. Is it really? Tell me about your mother. There is nothing to tell. She does very well. Thanks to some pond antiques, I take it? <laughs> Who told you that? I visited your home. I could see for myself. Nothing illegal has been done. I knew the antiques were being sold. I do not wish to discuss it. Well, well done for pissing her off. Tell me about your father. Henri Alphonse is a well-respected man. You can ask anyone in France. Oh dear. Damning with faint praise there. How is the state of the Alphonse family business? That is a very personal question. Yep. That bad, is it? Yeah. I'd like to discuss your family finances. <gasps> How did you get that? Does it matter? The point is, I have it. Uh, everything will be repaid. Every debt my father has, I made sure of it. There is no reason for the police to get involved. Hmm. And how will it be taken care of? Etienne He will cover the debt. And more besides. That's very generous of him. We are to be wed. Naturellement, he would not allow my family to be ruined. Oh dear. Your father ruined the family fortune? That must have been quite a trick. I thought it was an empire. My grandfather made mistakes as well. But my father, he's ill. He has an addiction to gambling. Uh, there we go. I hope you will not feel the need to make that public. Our name is all I have left. I'm not interested in gossip. Yet somehow you pick it up all over the place. So you intend to save the family business by marrying your father's business partner? Etienne is an intelligent and successful man. It works out well for everyone. You're marrying Etienne? Isn't he your father's age? He is 55. It does not matter. Passionate love, it fades. My parents' marriage taught me that. Being married to Etienne will suit me very well. Fair enough. Can't really argue. I've heard you have an interest in the Paris catacombs. I am interested in French history. The catacombs are full of it. Have you heard of a 13th century French monk named Benedict de Montfroy? No. Who was this man? I wish I knew. <laughs> Never mind. Have you heard of Saint Armand? He was a knight during the Crusades. Supposedly, he's buried in the catacombs. I never heard of him. You should ask a cataphile. A cataphile? People who explore the mines under Paris illegally. It's kind of an urban sport. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okie day. I'll leave you for now, mademoiselle. Goodbye, Mr. Rector. I'll leave you with your book as well, so I have I've no I've learned proof. enough about Caroline to complete my analysis. First, pills. Take it with a cup of coffee or something, man. Seriously, dude. Oh, now I can steal a lantern. Excellent! Into the portable hole it goes. Right. What is a catafile? Because that sounds like somebody has sex in a Someone who explores the uncharted Parisian underground, particularly the mines, tunnels and extensions of the Paris catacombs. The activity is against Parisian law and also dangerous to the uninitiated. Make sure you have a strong lamp and a guide who can tell you where to go and how far. Avoid if corpses creep you out. Okay. Let's get Caroline finished. Okay, engaged for a second time at the age of 21 to marry a 55-year-old businessman for business reasons. Reputed to be a love match, not a match. Father's nearly bankrupt, not a match. Involved behind the scenes in her father's business. Okay, Google, turn the bedroom light on. Well, 
slightly but deeply involved. Yes, so that is a match. First engagement was broken off. Right, so everything we've already done. Caroline is not Livia Drusilla. Her family's financial state is in a shambles, a situation only made salvageable by her upcoming marriage to her father's business partner. <laughs> oh dear, I've just committed slimy side. Sorry. Those last few data points have done it. Caroline is not a match for Livia Drusilla. I'll text Dexter and let him know. Lina Fonts is not the one. Alessandra Looks Lorraine. like we're going to Zurich. But there's one more thing I want to research before I leave Paris. <laughs> That's not my fault. That's what it sounds like. Okay. I think I feel a save coming up. Right, out we go. <laughs> ah, la -da -da -da. We know a cataphile. I suppose I could fill Walker in on the investigation. As I ought to talk to David. Mr. Walker? Yes, Mr. Rector. About my investigation into Caroline Alphonse. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm being terribly open with him this playthrough. Caroline is not the one we're looking for. Dexter wants us to head to Zurich to look at another candidate. I'm ready whenever you are, Mr. Rector. Listen, I appreciate the fact that you've told me more about this mission than you have to. I've taken no oaths of silence. Even so, I'm glad you trust me. At least, that far. You asked about my family earlier. I think I mentioned I have one sister. She's married and lives in Ohio. My parents are alive, but we don't really speak. I haven't since I was in college. Why not? We have opposing views on a few minor things. Like how I should live my life. Oh, I don't why? suppose you really give a rat's ass, but you asked, so that's how it is. Thank you. Mm hmm. All sorts of options for why that might be. That's all for now. As you say, sir. Okay, so what else does that give me on David? Right. Saint Armand did not return to either his wife nor farm nor his family's farm after leaving the Crusades. Strange from his parents. That's right. Uh, attending church must leave catechism against the wishes of his parents. Grew up in the workhouse for orphans and only barely knew his mother, siblings, and grandfather. Became estranged from his family due to his aiding German nationals escape justice. Never married. Though married after the crusade, he did not return. So, hmm, that's a maybe. Hmm. He's not in anything else. And I don't like him for this. Oh, all right then. So, my options are... Santa Mor he doesn't match on the sibling but he does match up with than anyone else there's gonna have to be Santa Mont. it's no use Walker could fit any of these three but narrowing it down to one is impossible without further data I need the information Dexter has which he's promised to give me after I complete this assignment okay out we go Oh, uh, wait, what? Sorry, night. No. Well, okay. Let's have a chat with the cat cataphile barista. Excuse me. 
Yes. Okay. I noticed your tattoo. It's a special design, monsieur. I'm afraid I can't give you the name of the shop. Don't want it. Are you a cataphile? You know this word. I said it, didn't I? I'm looking for information. What information is that? Information. <laughs> Do you know the catacombs? Go to any tourist office. They can give you a brochure. Uh -huh. I don't mean the tourist part of the catacombs. Oh, then I don't know what you mean. Yeah, as if. Do you know how to find Sanong Ma, the knight of the catacombs? The skeleton? Yes, I know it. Will you tell me? Are you offering a reward? <sighs> You're not with the police, eh? Do I look like a French policeman? No. <laughs> Fair enough. To find the knight, go down through the manhole cover in the alley near the patisserie on Roumont. You can't miss him. Thank you. Okie dokie. But we have nothing there. Right. Let's go catacombing. That must be the entrance to the catacombs that the barista mentioned. We found Don't the strain door. yourself. Here, let me. Ugh. You're welcome. I don't suppose you have a source of light. Other than my sunny disposition? No, not on me. I do, I do. Right. Let's use the lantern. There's apparently torches up beyond Who the Who is that? Sanama. The Knight of the Catacombs. Never heard of him. Neither had I until recently. He was associated with Benedict de Montfroy, a medieval monk who wrote a treatise on the Mobius theory. Huh. Interesting. Anybody else slightly concerned it looks like he was coming through a molecularly destabilized wall? Just asking. The Paris catacombs contain over six million skeletons. Probably most of them died of disease. It's not exactly a place I'd like to linger. A wacko. This must be the skeleton of Saint Omar. He's still dressed like a crusade knight, sword and all. Okay. He's been here for hundreds of years. It would be tactless of <laughs> me to disturb him now. Tactless. All the options, sir. Okay. Anything else down here? Let's walk what do you think of this place? It'd be nice without all the, you know, bones. Hmm. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That's a crusade shield. This must have something to do with San Amar. Okay. Oh, good lord. The skulls and bones on this wall have letters on them. Interesting. Oh. Prius mori quem fidem faleri. So. That's a crusade shield. I know. Oh, right. Okay, it's leaving it up, so I can have it. Um. Try that. Okay. Swapsies. What's the U? Oh, okay, bone for bone. Yes, more. Quam, quam, quam. It's 
to the other M. We don't for Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, there's a D there that shouldn't be. There we go, that's better. Oops, stop it, I'm trying to swap the bone. San Alman. Go. This is where it's all going to go horribly, horribly How interesting. Wrong. That must be a portrait of San Alman. Hear me. Cutscene. That's San Alman. He's the skeleton guy, right? Who was he? Director? Ugh. Come on, let's get you back to the hotel. He's on the ball. I'm here. Hang on. Falling. Are you all right? Yes. I'm tired. There's a bed right there. Put him in it. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. That's a happen. You're welcome. <laughs> Not to touch what belongs to me. Okay, let's save this. Uh, you've built an elf thief deck. Do I want to be an orc bard, centaur warrior, dwarf cleric, halfling ranger, or human wizard? Can I be a centaur warrior, please, fishy? Okay. Good to go. Let's go. Mr. Rector, Mr. Walker, my name is Gustav. Welcome to the Lorraine Estate. We are so pleased to be hosting guests from the U.S. Embassy for tonight's soiree. Thank you. I understand you came straight from the airport? 
You will want to rest and bathe. The other guests won't be arriving for a few hours. Do you mind if we look around first? If you like, please enjoy yourselves. Look at this place. I should really change. Good thing Dexter sent us those tuxes. Later. I want to get as much information on Alessandra as I can before the other guests arrive. Yes, sir. Alessandra Lorraine is the next candidate for Livia Drusilla. I need to investigate her to see if she's a match or not. Right. Uh, meanwhile... Assignment complete. Conclusive. I uh, experienced a visual hallucination of the night overlaying Walker is Walker Saint Armand. Well, to be fair, he is screaming it to everybody but you, Malachi. Let's have a look. Husbands descended from the Lorraines, cousins of the same royal bloodline as her father, the Habsburgs. Her family and her husband's family are among the wealthiest in Europe. That is a match. Descended on her father's side from the Habsburgs and the Bernadottes, two families of old ability. Married to a 47-year-old man at age 21. Again. So we're doing well so far. It's looking good. The Lorraine's butler, Gustav. Let's have a look. Sultry gaze. Sexually manipulative, about to fall asleep or a genetic feature. Looking at the whole outfit. Oh, yeah. Unusually handsome. Self-absorbed personality. Hired for his looks or is related to me. <laughs> He's got the same hair. Possibly hired for his looks. Possibly just he is self-absorbed. I think the way he's standing, that's his self-absorbed to me. Diamond type in. Aspires above his station. Gift from his mother or secretly wealthy. I think he'd have more rings and things if he was actually wealthy. Overactive hands. Suppressing an itch. Subconscious gesture for a greedy personality or suppressed rage. And he's greedy. Self-absorbed and seductive, he aspires to be more than a family butler and is willing to use his good looks to get ahead. Okie dokie. That grandfather clock is at least 200 years old. It gives the foyer a pleasant gravitas. As you do. Got the library and the buffet room. The library. Are you comfortable, Carl? Good. I would be more comfortable with a slice of the cake I saw the caterers bringing in. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. But you know it's bad for you. I see you have guests. I'll talk to you later. Okay, who are you? Well, gentlemen, come in. Okay. It's a calligraphy pen. A dark me. wood finish in a classic style, just like the rest of the room. It's a bit boring. Knock-off glass decanter sets are popular, but that's genuine crystal. I bet the brandy is top shelf, too. Uh-huh. The artwork is rather bland. Dear. Don't be kind, Malachi. Reference books, maps, encyclopedias, and... astrology guides. Oh, dear. <laughs> Biographies of famous people, including Mein Kampf. Lovely. Uh-huh. Nobody said these people were nice. Classic novels. I enjoyed fiction as a boy, but no longer. What is the point? Natural sciences. Someone has quite an interest in astronomy. I aspire one day. I would absolutely love a room with the whole floor to ceiling built in bookcases. It's just me. That couch is too feminine for a library. Perhaps Alessandra picked it out. That must be Carl Lorraine. He doesn't look very well or very comfortable. Hmm. Right, let's have a look. Sad, haunted eyes. He's a lonely man, he's in a lively mood for the party, or has led a tragic life. It's 
strikes me as quite lonely, possibly. Wrinkled, ill-fitting tuxedos. Wearing borrowed clothes, is not really interested or engaged in the party, isn't accustomed to wearing... Well, if he's that loaded, he's going to be accustomed to wearing form wear, so not really interested in the party. Pale yellow skin. She did say it was bad for him. So, long-term illness. When dealing with a long-term illness, he's lonely but doesn't enjoy his social obligations, such as his wife's party this evening. Oh, bless him. Let's make his day worse. Are you Hal Lorraine? I'm Malachi Rector. The U.S. Embassy called to say I'd be arriving? Ah, uh, I did hear something of the sort. Perhaps we can talk tomorrow. I'd prefer to speak to you now. I don't have the energy tonight, and I've still the party to get through. Tomorrow. Right. Okay. I'd say I can take that. Oh, yes, I can. Cool. Do you mind if I borrow this pen? Not at all. She's just randomly lying there, and I am stealing. My pocket dimension. I have a hard enough time maintaining my control as it is. Do you now? Okay, what's the butler got to say for himself? Might I have a word, Gustav? As you wish. When the embassy contacted you, perhaps they mentioned that I might need some information. I am here to provide anything you need, Mr. Rector. Within a reason. Okay. There was a lovely young woman speaking to Herr Lorraine in the library. Who was she? Uh, that's Helene, Alessandra's sister. Ah, I thought there was a resemblance. Tell me about Alessandra. She is lovely, charming. What would you like to know? Does she have any hobbies or interests? She enjoys many things in life. I'm sure she would be happy to tell you herself. Uh -huh. Tell me about Carl Lorraine. Everyone in the household is very fond of Herr Lorraine. It is sad that he is not in the best of hells. Oh? What's the matter with Herr Lorraine? It is not my place to say, but as you can see, he is well enough to have these parties in the house. For Alessandra's sake. Uh-huh. You said the party tonight is for Alessandra's sake. What do you mean exactly? Well, uh, Alessandra, being a beautiful young woman, naturally loves parties. But some of Herr Lorraine's politics have not been... Uh, well received. So they entertain at home and have trusted friends here. Are you saying the couple is not welcome in society? Oh, no, no. They are, after all, Lorraine's. Only, it is easier to control the guest list in one's own home, and uh, Herr Lorraine is too polite to argue in public. So he pissed me into Mein Kampf, amongst other things. Tell me more about Helene. If I can. What information do you need? Everything. Is Helene older than Alessandra? Younger? One year younger, but she is older in many ways, if you understand me. Mm. You really could be more specific. <laughs> Alessandra, oh, she loves life, people, pleasure. Helene, uh, she is serious, like an old woman. Of course, such a personality is very admirable. Yes, I can see you're flushed with admiration. <laughs> Are Helene and Alessandra close? Uh, no. They have very different interests in life. Do they? Thank you, Gustav. You are most welcome. Uh-huh. Not here. Have a look in the buffet room. Wow. Hey, if we're talking one foot square, one, two, three. That is basically the size of my flat. The whole room. That's it. Good lord. Glasses of wine. Probably a decent vintage, too. I don't think these guys are going to be cheaping out anywhere. 
The tables are nicely dressed. Better than we are, in fact. Uh. I'd love a two-bedroom apartment, Slimy. Chocolate cake. It looks quite good, if you care for that sort of thing. I do. Those hors d'oeuvres look quite good, actually. No expense spared. I want to finish up my business before I eat. Cakey? Oh, hello, I can have cake, apparently. Seeing cake or death. Maybe I will take a slice of this cake. Not gonna argue about where exactly you're keeping it. Right, let's have a look at Alessandra. Alessandra Lorraine. She looks like the photo in my dossier. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Well, the word vapid springs to mind. Keeps checking her hair. It's got to be obsessed with her own appearance. That's not even an argument. Keeps checking her cell phone. She's watching the time. She's hoping to hear from someone or her battery's dying. I want cake now, fish. Gown has a modern design and a bright colour. Her totem animal is a bluebird. She ran out of other things to wear. She likes to be the centre of attention. Centre of attention, quite definitely. A self-centred woman. Her physical appearance is highly important to her and she's focused on her own drama. Right. Let's have a chat, shall we? Excuse me. Are you Alessandra Lorraine? Yes, uh, how do you do? I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted making sure everything is ready for tonight. Have we met? No, I'm Malachi Rector. I'm here from the U.S. Embassy. Oh, charming. I do hope you enjoy your visit to our lovely home. I'm sure I will. Do you have a moment for a few questions? Well, perhaps just a moment. Okay. Tell me about your husband. Hell Lorraine. Carl? Do you wish to speak to him? He's around somewhere. You might try the library. Uh-huh. I hear you have a young son, madame. Laurent? Oh, yes. He is so sweet and so pretty. <laughs> of course, he won't be seen tonight. His nurse must have him in bed by now. So, are you enjoying your stay in Zurich? I always enjoy Zurich. Oh, right. So, would you keep your child in a little box somewhere? And what do you do with your time, madame? Oh, um, I love to travel and see the sights, uh, be out with my friends, and we entertain a great deal here at the estate. Oh, have you had some wine, Mr. Rector? Please, feel free to walk around. The gardens are lovely this time of the evening. Thank you. Uh -huh. Perhaps I will. Your husband is an important man. Do you enjoy political life? Well... I do enjoy the people we get to meet, the heads of state and the celebrities, and I adore entertaining. Oh boy. I met your husband. I take it he's not well? Oh, no. It's so difficult for him. Well, that is what stress can do to a man. That's why I never like to discuss heavy matters. Life should be easy and fun. Don't you agree? Quite. Thank you for your time. Of course. Shh. She's two steps away from going on the roof with a rifle. Okay. What do you have to say, David? Mr. Walker. Yes, sir? Alessandra keeps taking her cell phone out of her purse. I need to get my hands on it and find out what's on there. Right. If you distract her, I can lift it from her purse. So, you object to flirting, but not pickpocketing? I was in the military, sir. <laughs> well, far be it from me to argue. Fine, just be ready. Right. Yeah, thought so. She's atrocious, Fish. As a, as a human being, she's terrible. I believe I will. Okay, do this. Lovely dress, red wine. I see no way that could be distracting. Excuse me. I was going to ask if those doors lead oh, to... Oh, my gown! Oh, 
It's ruined. I'm so sorry. That was terribly clumsy of me. I'm sure it was not intentional. Pardon me. I must change. Très galant. It worked, didn't it? Give me the phone. <laughs> I'm a player character. Hey. Uh, what have we got? Not interested in politics despite being her husband being a politician. Though definitely not a match. As one sibling, that is a match. Due to her husband's unpopular politics, they've kept out of the public eye. Again, a match. Okay. Right. Let's flick to the... Right, let's have a look. I wonder who Alessandra is angry with. If I can get her to go to that meeting, maybe I can find out. Hmm. Meet me at Aphrodite at Three Dong. Okay. The garden has a formal layout. Quite nice to look at. But I wouldn't want to have to pay the gardener. Uh-huh. What have we got? This statue is of Hera. Zeus's wife and queen of the gods. The garden benches look nice, but they're not very comfortable. So much for encouraging a love of the great outdoors. Wait. Let's do a quick search of... Yeah. The statue is of Hestia, goddess of the hearth. These flowers are white jasmine. I'll take some of these flowers. Just on the ground, what the hell? I can. It could turn out to be her sister. Conceive abovably. The fountain looks new. I would have found something ancient to refurbish. Yes, but, you know, you have to put this place down somehow. I wouldn't mind a shower, but it might upset the Lorraines if I took one here. Ah! Okay, what else have we got? Uh, it looks like Aphrodite Someone to wants me. to meet Alessandra here at Three Gongs, but I need to convince her to come. Perhaps a makeup gift would work? What would Alessandra like? Money, probably. Lots and lots I'll of I'll take money. some of these flowers. It's remind me to take the flowers from all the statues. This statue is Artemis, huntress and goddess of the moon. Hey. I'll take some of these flowers. It's like me, do you just want Malachi to get his kit off? But I don't think I picked up any flowers from there. Hydrangeas. I'll take some of these flowers. Anybody else just initially think, wonder why Hera was apparently trying to get a mobile signal? <laughs> it's not bad, actually, is it? Okay. We need a present. Cake. Guy in the library wanted cake. Let's give him cake. A 
and see what happens. We'll ignore that Malachi's been carrying it around in his coat pocket. Might I offer you a slice of cake? Oh. Oh, yes, I... Thank you. With a fork and everything. How did that not fall off? Are you feeling better now? Quite. The doctors tell me sugar is bad for my health, but it does make me feel more alert. At least for a short time. Yes. Well, before that buzz wears off, <laughs> would you answer a few questions? Very well. Okay. Talk to me. I heard someone use the term three gongs. Do you know what that means? It refers to the grandfather clock in the hall. It chimes three times at half past the hour. Oh. May I ask after your health? You don't look well. Oh, that is honest of you. I had a heart attack six months ago, then pneumonia. I'm improving. So glad to hear it. What role do you have in hmm. politics? I was a member of the Swiss Federal Council up until a year ago, but currently I work to regain my health. I believe you have a son with Alessandra? How old is he? Laurent, he's just over a year old. He's perfect, but I suppose all fathers think so. Do they? How old was your wife when she gave birth? Oh, well, let's see. We had been married a year. She was 22. Okay. Data point to go go. Tell me about Alessandra. Do you have something specific in mind? How shallow is she? Alessandra is quite lovely. Has she ever won any awards for her beauty? If you mean a beauty contest, no. That sort of thing is not for people of our class. Both she and Helene did high fashion modeling for a short time. Perhaps that counts. That's helpful, yes. Okay. What are Alessandra's interests? She enjoys fashion design. She designs her own clothes, you know. Is that what you mean? Yes. Thank you. That does not surprise me in the slightest. Does Alessandra have an interest in politics? No, she does not. Alessandra has a sister, Helene. What can you tell me about her? Helene is a remarkable young woman. There's something about her. She'll go far in politics. You can quote me on that. Helene likes politics? Oh, yes. If you ever heard her argue with me, you wouldn't doubt it. We may not see eye to eye on the issues, but I respect her enormously. I'm thinking you married the wrong sister there. Excuse me for a moment, Hell Lorraine. Yes, of course. Definitely. Sister. Right. Most of the data points down. Wants to be a fashion designer. Her husband frequently preferred wearing the clothing she made for him, so that is a match. So beautiful, she did fashion modelling. That again is a match. Had her first son at a young age. So she's pretty close, but not quite. head up. Hello. There's a thing. Inspect the thing. It's the thing. Oh, it's a ribbon. Okay. That's Alessandra Lorraine on the left and her sister Helene on the right. Their birth name is Bernadotte. Ah, white jasmine. That's Alessandra. Okay. I believe those are jasmine flowers. There's a still life by Giovanna Garzoni that features them. You basically don't do reality, do you, sir? Okay, so we need a makeup gift. I'm thinking white jasmine. 
And the ribbon is her favourite colour, apparently. She does bl So... That's better. It looks like a bouquet now. It looks remarkably like it was just, you know, tangled. The family's private rooms are upstairs. I may have to resort to that, but for now, I'll stick to the public areas. Okay. They've kept the original chandelier, but replaced the candles with modern replicas. It's a reminder of the past's grandeur, I suppose. Uh-huh. Boring landscape paintings from the 19th century. Semi-valuable, but still boring. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a replica of a Canova sculpture. I do adore Malachi. He's he's horrible to everybody. He's even-handedly horrible. That's not where I meant to go. Think you and he would get along quite well. I think I would either kill him or get along quite well, and I honestly don't know which. Right. I don't have anything else you can tell us, Gustav. Oh, yeah. Another moment of your time, Gustav. Yes, sir. Just a moment. Thank you, Gustav. You are... Um, Slimy, yeah, you've just named one of my all-time crushes, I have to say. Methos from Highlander. Well, specifically the actor, not the character particularly. Right, can I use... Ah. There. That should get unknown to the meeting. Now I just need to convince Alessandra to go. She wants some sort of apology. Right. Uh, if you've ever seen, if you've never seen Sanctuary, he's in that as well. Briefly. A couple of episodes. Um, ba -ba -ba. Alessandra, I wonder if Alessandra's upstairs. Oh. Mr. Walker? Yes, Mr. Rector. Oh, here we go. About that panic attack I had in Paris. You said you hadn't had one in years until recently. Do you have any idea what's triggering them? No, but it feels like... Like something I've kept locked up is no longer staying put. God, I sound insane. Maybe I am. No, sir. I can't say I understand what it is you do, but you are definitely not insane. How reassuring. I picked up some more Xanax in Paris, so hopefully it won't happen again. Uh -huh. You know we're here to check into Alessandra Lorraine. I do. Do you think she's the one you're looking for? Some of her biographical data lines up. Her family background, her marriage. Well, obviously, or Dexter wouldn't have sent me here. But whether or not she's really a match, we'll have to see. It's the I know you'll sister. figure it out, Mr. Rector. Can I ask you something? Yes. Did you always want to be a soldier? I did. What I mean is... Was there something specific that drew you into that profession? Dreams, perhaps? Memories? No, not really. I just always liked the idea of being strong and protecting people. I see. They are so flirting. <laughs> yeah, I just... I can't quite envision Malachi as being someone who's constantly on Valium. Are I you particularly drawn to the medieval age? Uh, no. But I like that movie with Rutger Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer. Does that count? 
There's I mean, something you're not telling me. Something that happened in Paris. There's a great deal I'm not telling you, Mr. Walker. But it's nothing you need to know. Yes, sir. Don't piss him off. I don't suppose we have time for more of your jokes. Hey, there's always time for a joke. Great tension reliever. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? Do tell. Nothing. They just waved. <laughs> I must be losing brain cells. That was funny. <laughs> what did Batman say to Robin just before they got in the car? I don't know. What? Get in the car. <laughs> that was bad, dude. What do you call an alligator who wears a vest? Let's see. An investigator? Well done, you. Oh. The past, the present, and the future walk into a bar. It was a little tense. Ouch. <laughs> I think I like the puns. I can see that. All right, one more joke and that's it. Sure. What did one military helmet say to another? Something about being hard-headed? Nope. You stay here. I'll go on ahead. Oh. <laughs> Good one. Oh, dear. Your sense of humor is sucky, David. <laughs> it's quite bad. Right, the family's private rooms are upstairs. Hello. The staircase overlooks the foyer. Foyer. Right. Need for her to take on. That. Yeah, some of the, some of them are okay, but some of them are a bit dodgy. Oh, the, the ballroom. ballroom is through there. Okay. It looks like they're keeping it closed until the guests arrive for the party. Party. The tables are nicely dressed. Oh, can I hide her phone? Table. No. And I put the bouquet on the table. Hmm. Not a bad idea, but I should leave a message with the flowers. Okay. Do I have any paper? I'll write a message on the ribbon. Oh, right, okay. What should I say? <laughs> Forgive me, love you, you know you want it. <laughs> when in doubt, let's apologise. Forgive me. That should do it. Right. And then let's leave those on the I'll table. leave this bouquet where Alessandra can stumble across it. <laughs> The bait is set. Now to wait for Alessandra to take it. I'm glad she's changed into her subtle, understated B choice. There we are. That must be the three gongs mentioned in that text to Alessandra. Okay. Out we go. Let's see who she's meeting. Good be. Hong Kong Fui. Power of teleportation compels you. That's really high, easy to hide in a hedge maze. Yep. I still haven't entirely forgiven you, Gustav. You know you were flirting with the caterer. I saw it. Tell me you didn't mean it. That you love only me. Yep, she's a balling. <laughs> You're the one who is married. But you know I don't sleep with Carl. It's not the same. You're jealous of everyone, Liebling. Oh, I can't help it. I'm crazy about you. Uh-huh. Malachi, mm, we'd better go. It's time almost time for the party. To take I can a photo. Wait. 
I can't. I have to answer the door, my sweet. Come on. Malachi, now's, now's well, the time Well, that was an interesting data point. <laughs> He's knocking off the button. I have enough data on Alessandra to make an analysis. Okay. I could also phase through solid hedges. Right. Extremely petty and jealous of her lover's flirtations. Was famous for being tolerant of Augustus's lover. Not a match. Having an affair. Not a match. So not a match. Alessandra is not Livia Drusilla. She has none of the women's interests or acumen for politics. She's unfaithful and she's extremely jealous. Basically, yeah. I'm sure Alessandra is not Livia Drusilla. But I want to look around a little more before I finalise my report. Because we have a sneaking suspicion it's Helene. Not here. Gold. Yeah, I love point and click adventures, Simon. Let's have a chat. That's Helene Bernadotte, Alessandra's younger sister. Elegant hairstyle. As a classic timeless style, dislikes having her hair down, someone else chose the style for her. I think we can safely say nobody else chooses anything for Helene. Regal air, guarded gaze. Intelligent and reserved, antisocial, doesn't feel comfortable in her sister's house. Definitely intelligent. Flattering dress, no accessories. Doesn't have the money for jewellery. Serious, not frivolous, hinting she wants men to buy her jewels. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that it's serious. Sturdy physique. Strong and disciplined mentally and physically. Does manual labour or is of lower peasant class? She's not lower class and she is not into manual labour. There's something else here. I can feel it. But I need to touch her hand to be sure. Uh, Helen Bernadotte is an intelligent, strong, and serious young woman who knows how to move in high society. Something else about her, though, I need to touch her. That's not creepy. Pardon me? Yes? I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Malachi Rector. I'm with the U.S. Embassy. I am Helene Benedot. So pleased to meet you. It looks like this will be quite the party you're hosting. It should be a pleasant evening, but I can't take any credit. My sister Alessandra hosts the parties. She enjoys it. And you? Surely you enjoy it as well. It usually provides me with some interesting conversation, yes. Oh, she's 90% less annoying than her sister. Tell me about Alessandra Lorraine. What about her? You're Alessandra's sister? Yes, I am. Tell me about Alessandra. My sister is very much as she appears. Perhaps you should get to know her for yourself. But you might do better to speak to her husband, Herr Lorraine. He's a fascinating man. This is going to cause trouble, isn't it, if I say this? Yeah, what the hell, in for a penny. Are there any other options? Will you be having an escort join you this evening? No. Then you must be single. It's hard to imagine a lover would allow you to attend such a function alone. You are very forward. But I don't believe in jealousy. Either both people understand what they're getting out of the relationship or they don't. Jealousy serves no purpose. I quite agree. I think he's sob marrying her off to the senator. I think he's interested. Okay, let's have a fight and go to Canterbury. 
Does Alessandra always sleep with the help? Who are you? What business is it of yours? It was a simple observation. I would ask you to keep it to yourself, if I could trust you to do so. Carl doesn't need any more scandal. I have no intention of telling anyone. Then why did you tell me? What do you want? Good question. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Goodbye, Mr. Rector. Yep. Yep, let's just piss her off. The family's private rooms. Okay. I don't want to talk to him in front of Helene. Okay. Downstairs we go, then. Well, that went Not well. Not here. Uh, let's have a chat in the buffet room. Not here. Oh, come on. I've got to have a talk with him somewhere. Dude. Should I challenge Gustav? What the hell? Oh, her room. Yes. Never mind. I don't need to talk to you, Gustav. Another moment of. Yes, sir. Oh, good. I don't Thank need you, to talk Gustav. To you. you are most welcome. It's all about gloves, this game. I see, it's not inside his jacket, it's actually inside his chest. Good. Helene dropped this glove. Okay. Let's give it back to her and apologize. You dropped your glove. Oh, I didn't realize. Would you allow me the honor of putting it on? No, I don't think so. Very Pissed well. Me off earlier. Apologize. Really apologize. I apologize for upsetting you earlier. I do have a tendency to blurt things out. Of course, I won't mention what I saw between Alessandra and Gustav to anyone. I would appreciate that. I hope you are sincere. I worry about Carl, Alessandra's husband. He's had a difficult year. I saw you checking on on Herr Lorraine earlier. I hope he's not too unwell. He improves daily, but we're still quite worried about him, of course. It must be difficult. I trust with the care of his family, he will soon be in excellent health. Thank you. I do appreciate hearing that. It's not his wife. There we go. Mr. Rector? Ah. Is he all right? Yes, I knew it. What is the matter with him? Uh, he gets headaches. It's all right. Nothing to worry about. I'll... I'll be downstairs if you decide you need help. Yeah. It's what happened? not logic. You okay? I saw her. Livia Drusilla. It's Helene. Wow. You're sure? Yes. But I need proof. I'm going to do some digging. See if I can get into her room. You go to the party and keep an eye on her. We need to guard her until Dexter takes over. Right. I'll watch over her. Good luck. I'll invade her privacy. That was full on psychic. Hey, Mecky. We're annoying rich women at the moment. That's the theme of this evening. My instinct tells me Helene is Livia Drusilla. But I need data to back it up. I need to learn more about her and prove my intuition. You're still hung up on the catifier, aren't you, Slimey? One sibling sister. Yep. Send her. Yeah, she's got the same matches as her sister, obviously. Too practical to be jealous. 
interested in politics, fashion modelling, so that works. Serious for her age. Yeah. We're just looking for proof now. <gasps> Oddly enough, dancing came up today when I was chatting to people. I am clinically bad at. I like it, but I'm so bad. Drat a cup. In case you haven't noticed, someone just hosted you. Say thank you. Thank you, Dav. I dance like everyone's dad. Oh, hello. These flowers are still fresh. The only reason a woman would throw away an expensive bouquet like this is if she was angry. Which is probably what would happen if I ever tried to send flowers to a woman. <laughs> There's no reason to carry the flowers with me. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. A positive pregnancy test. Helene is pregnant. That's highly suggestive. At some point she had sex. I'll take this with me. It's an important data point. It's the daddy. Looks like the maid hasn't emptied the trash can in a while. Looks like the maid... Oh, okay. Looks like the... Nothing else, really. Looks like the... Yeah, you was... Yeah. That Helene's was desk. thought. Oh. These pictures are an unusual choice for a young woman. Helene seems to have a fascination with deep space. She too has beamed in from the mothership. I know. This magazine seems important to Helene, but I'm not sure why. Perhaps she's interested in the summit. Oh, Mecky, you missed some absolute flirting earlier. Including David hanging on to poor old Malachi in the hotel room when Malachi was having a seizure vision. After having a proper vision vision of David in armour. I don't need to take it. Yeah, you do. This magazine seems... I don't need to. Euro 03 conference, Markham keynote speaker. If that's Senator Markham, then Helene is about to meet him. Interesting. Okay. That notation is interesting. They seem to be coordinates of some kind. I think I'll take this with me. Yep, steal all the post it notes. Three months. That could relate to Helene's pregnancy. It is, she won't be in that dress for much longer. Helene's cell phone. That should provide some interesting data. Personal space and privacy, it's just I don't need words. to take the cell phone with me, but I do need to see its contents. Okay. It didn't work. Yes, I don't really it have... It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Oh. I think we have more to investigate. This post-it was on Helene's desk. They look like coordinates of some kind. <laughs> yes, please note that her sister's phone was not on... So it was not locked. A positive pregnancy. So. Have a proper look around. Ah, oh, there we go. Looks like you can connect a device to the telescope. I'm not familiar with telescope technology, but this looks expensive. Helene must be serious about astronomy. This looks huge.
Why is this? Uh, ascension three hours, declination fifty six. See, we're on the nothing, nothing, nothing from okay. looking at something. It's a 15th century bed. Very nice. Yeah. I'm thinking I need to hook herself into it. The chair is a modern reproduction. There's nothing of interest about it. I can use my own cell phone. Once I've ever slept in the four poster. Helene wrote down these coordinates. I'll take a photo and see if I can identify the constellation. Hey. Sorted. Monster a USB cable as well. Right. So, eh. The chair is a modern. in there. Oh no, he's buggered off. Okay. I don't want the cake. Actually, I want the decanter set. I have a hard enough time maintaining my control as it is. Don't we all, mate? Right. Let's use this photo with the astronomy books and see if I can sort out. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I'll look up these coordinates. Cassiopeia. That's Cassiopeia. Right. Just found out her uh, mobile phone password. Again, slimy. We're on to each his own. Right. I don't need to take the self. I'll try the name of this constellation. That's it. it. The password go. was Cassiopeia. Come I need to, to find out who sent these messages. Well, who could trace that number? Well, possibly the really dodgy guy you know. Once a government agency. Come back to me, I miss you. I leave her, I swear. I want to marry you, I want her child. The scandal would ruin your career and mine. It's no use. Please stop coming. I'm glad I saw what was person. on the cell phone. Right. Um, I think... I don't need to take it. No. Did she knock off and say there's a Markham or something? Right. Have a look at her data points. Willing to not remain with the father of her child. Willing to divorce her first husband. Yep, that works. Scheduled to attend a conference. Met Augustus and fell in love. That's a match. Has an interest in astronomy. Astrology. Close enough. 
pregnant with her first child at 22. Yep, that's a match. I do need more data points. Oh, fair enough, Becky. Right. I know you're knocking off the sister. Another moment of your... Yes, sir. No. Thank you, Gustav. You are most welcome. I wonder if I was supposed to look at the number specifically. I never think that there are times when perhaps you shouldn't have put your chat on screen. I don't need to. I want to take it though. I can't use it. I can't use anything on it. I don't need to take the planner. I can remember what it said. Okay. This magazine seems important to Helene, but I'm not sure why. Perhaps she's interested in the summit. Euro 03 conference, Markham keynote speaker. Okay. That's a 15th century. Studying. That's the constellation Cassiopeia. Um, um. I keep everything worth knowing on my phone. Okay. How about you keep something worth knowing? Can't search for Helene. I'd rather send a text. There we go. That, if I am not mistaken, is the senator who is supposed to become Those president. Those text messages are from René Corbeau, the current president of France. That should be enough information for me to do my analysis on Helene. Okay, sorry, no, it's actually the French president. My apologies. Right. Analysis a go go. Had an affair at 22, married at 16 to her first husband, who was much older than her. Close enough. Lean is Livia Drusilla, there's no doubt about it. Sent image and record Dexter. This confirms the vision I had on the stairs. Helene is Livia Drusilla. I'll text the new information I've found to Dexter. In his lab. David scrubs up well. S'il vous plaît. Merci. Toying with the rim of the glass. Ah, uh, this isn't good. No, don't drink. No. Just text 
to book a month to month to Malachi. Stop! Help! Someone! Ah, Malachi, there you go. No. Get up! Get up! <laughs> David! Now I don't fancy your chances. Right. You were supposed to be handling our safety. I was only to worry about identifying the girl. That's what you said. I can't tell you how sorry I am about what's happened. I thought we'd covered our tracks. Clearly, I've underestimated the problem. Just a oh, bit. Really? I knew they were a serious threat. Bianca Cardolo was killed before we were even on to the Livia Drusilla pattern. I assumed that your presence in Venice had tipped them off to the fact that you were the savant. And that explained the attack on you and Mr. Walker in Cairo. But the only way they could have known about Helene was if there's a leak inside our organization. Figured that out, did you? You mm -hmm. said the attackers were Chinese-American, probably chosen to make us think the Chinese were behind it. But if they are American, then why would they want to eliminate the possibility of a great American president? What does it matter? Walker and Helene are probably already dead. If they'd wanted them dead, they could have killed them at that party instead of abducting them. We can't give up yet. But why would they keep them alive? Leverage, perhaps? I don't know. But I do know that if anyone can survive a hostage situation, it's Captain Walker. I need to know more about Walker and about this situation. And I need to know now. I'll tell you everything I can. Good. Good, because you were going to anyway. Otherwise, I was pushing you out of the window. Who is David Walker? This is probably not the best time to get into that. Okay. Now. Very well. The warrior. That's another archetype? Yes. One of a dual archetype. He's paired with the savant. What is that supposed to mean? It means that he needs you to fulfill his destiny, and you need him to fulfill yours. I don't need anyone. To live however you want to define that? No. To fulfill your destiny? Yes. I read about Saint Armand, the protector of Benedict de Montfroy. Was he the warrior archetype too? Yes, he was. Why is the warrior paired with the savant? I don't fully understand it myself. This is my first opportunity to witness such a connection firsthand. I realize my timing could be better, but as a scientist, I'm curious. Have you noticed any difference since you met Captain Walker? A any increase in your abilities? It's said that Montfroy was plagued with headaches and seizures until he met Saint Armand. I don't know. Perhaps. You haven't let him out of your sight since you met him in Cairo, you know. That's not... I was merely trying to establish if he was a double agent. Your file on me is woefully lacking if you believe I'm the type to form attachments of any kind. Yeah, that's why you moved him into your flat. What exactly is my destiny? That's for you to define. But I do know it's related to Mobius in some way. The past savants made significant contributions to the science of Mobius. The savant seems to have a gift that allows him to see the patterns we mere mortals cannot. Apparently it's a gift our enemies don't want Fita to control. You, you should have told me this before. But no, you had to hold the information hostage. That's the pot calling the kettle black. It's no good arguing with me. Until we know for certain that Captain Walker and Helene are dead, we must try to get them back. I hope you agree. Of course. And you'd better hope we do. He's got his angry head on. There must be a pattern to this situation. Something I can interpret so that we know what happens next. These Chinese-Americans interrupted the pattern. Livia Drusilla was never kidnapped. From here, it's completely random. You said yourself, there's a mole in Feta. The text I sent you about Helene, who saw it? Only myself and Reichardt. 
I did send it to Senator Markham, but I hardly think he would... Don't uh... think. It's dangerous <laughs> when you attempt to think. I want a file on Reichardt, and I need access to his office. Now. Very well. As it happens, Reichardt is out today. I'll grant you access to his office under the condition that nothing you learn goes to anyone but me. Agreed. You said you told Markham about Helene. I'll need to speak with him. He'd be the last person to sabotage this, but yes. I'll send you his address to your phone and let him know you're coming. About Reichardt. Yes? What's his position at FITA? He's assistant director, my second in command. Yeah, Mickey, this guy is extremely dramatic, and he's also extremely in trouble if David gets hurt. Where is Reichert? He took a rare day off. His parents are in town for a conference. Uh -huh. How can you trust Reichert? He was fully vetted before coming here. He was a star athlete in his youth, and then a trusted civil servant. There's no blemish on his record, and I simply trust him. Illogical. Okay. Let's head to the office. That button. Reichardt's office is up on the second floor. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Oh, American second floor. Okay, fair enough. Exactly, just somebody because somebody was blameless when they were vetted. Okay, what do we got? His view isn't as grand as Dexter's or mine, but it's not bad. <laughs> You're just obsessed with views. The cabinet contains personal items. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, baby. Alicia, June 16th, 2011. Rackett's daughter, I presume. She was born on June 16th, 2011. No, he just has random pictures of babies. This must be Rackett's son. His birthday is March 17th, 2010. Oh. A wedding photo. Michael and Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah, Marilyn. That's a peculiar accent. Um, there's nothing else I can do with it. Okay. Hello. Puzzle box. This is endearing. Right. So. That doesn't fit. Let's click. Zoom. Guy. Right. That is possibly that, yes.
this. This and this and this and this. That is supposed to be there. No, I don't think I've quite got it. Right, hang on. Now that's got to be one of the babies, because that's got the strange, distorted thing going on. That doesn't. That's not where I meant to put it. That's where. I meant to put it. That's better. However, I think that needs to be down there. That's better. No, I don't think I've quite got it. Really? Right. Something bleed and obvious I'm missing. Oh, there is. Stick. No, I don't think I've quite got it. Oh, come on! babies the right way around the first time A sentence I don't think I'll ever say again no I don't think I've quite got it yeah baby corners have swapped twice now okay so that does run into that which is fine it's into that That has to go there. Um, doesn't make any difference, I realise. Hmm. It doesn't do. Oh, that's a fixed point, so no, that has to go there. Okay. That's just weird. Right. But that is a piece. So that has to go there. So that is a fixed point. That can't go there. Hmm. It doesn't do anything. So no, again, that's another fixed point. So that has to go there. But that has to be death. What is that? Death, war, love, go. and birth, shown in different periods of history. This design has something to do with Mobius. Yeah, we... Yeah. I've got a key! It looks like a data key, but it has an unusual shape to it. It's shaped like an actual key. Right! Nothing down. to poke at in there. It's emptier than a midnight showing of love story. Ah! Oh it's boy. a book on cryptology. Oh, good. An extraordinarily uninteresting plant. Mm hmm. This guy likes his puzzles, doesn't he?
Right. Oh, goody. Seize the ciphers. This page was earmarked. It's a list of common cipher methods. Okay. Reichert has a degree from the University of Paris Sorbonne. That's unexpected. He graduated May 16th, 2000. Give me dates again, guys. Certificates of recognition from FETA. They must hand them out in lieu of bonuses at the Christmas party. Ah. Right. That file folder has my <laughs> name on it. Ooh. It's never good to Google yourself, but what the hell. Okay. I, like I strongly <laughs> resent this analysis of me, <laughs> even if it does sound vaguely familiar. Antisocial tendencies, exceptionally high IQ, classic superiority complex, no interest in other people, alienation. No sympathy or empathy. His primary motivation was money. Until partnered with the warrior, the savant is unreliable, untrustworthy, and of limited use. Should this relationship become established, the warrior can provide the savant with an emotional connection to the world and a moral compass required for us to utilize his considerable potential. Right. Good to know. Uh, I am going to take a very, very brief break and I will be back in a mo, guys. Oh, good night, night. That's where. Wait. Let's get back to this. Rykut's computer. You could chew that sentence a bit more if you wanted. There's a password hint, but it's encrypted. Oh, I God. need to decode it. I'll write this cipher down and take it with me, so I can work on decoding it. Oh, for goodness sake. No. That uh, ain't gonna do it. That didn't work. Yeah. Choose a cipher from the list of possible ciphers above. 
Oh, keyword cipher unlikely. Hey, Robinson. Long time no see in stream. How the devil are you, sir? Right. Just shut these alerts up because they're going to irritate me. Okay. Right. I don't really have a key. Password hint. Ah. Oh. How did that go? I hope it went well for you, Robinson. What this actually all to show. Okay. Well, the password hint. But the password hint's no use to me until I decipher it soon. Possible keys, Marilyn, Sorbonne, Mobius, and Rikon. Well, that's progress, Robinson. I should have all the information that might work out. So, yeah, you should be sure to hopefully get something out of that. Here's a cipher. What does that do? Which letter in the phrase add the number below to find the real letter, for example, L plus one M. Okay, so L N be L N R, is it? Wife's name? So, L. Bones just fried I. That's not, is it? That's not a word. Caesar cipher based on the doctor. Still got that same problem. Okay, what's the null cipher? Do a very A donation. Wow, you oh, are awesome good Lord. and probably quite cool. So thanks hugely. Oh wow. Rent for my comfy corner on your stream chat. <laughs> Hashtag per D. Thank you. Good Lord. 
Sorry, you just did go by Bataka, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, good grief. Sorry. Um... Tragic drought. Tragic, tragic drought. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you. So if, if, that really, really means a huge amount to me. Um, I'm in desperate need of a graphics card update upgrade because um, oh, look at this. Uh, my graphics card is long and faithful service. It unfortunately is on the way out. Um, I can repair it to a certain extent, but well, to be honest, this now gives me the option of getting a new graphics card fish. It means I can keep an eye out for a sale and get something good as opposed to, oh my God, I need to buy something now and, you know, end up with something, you know, uh, well, I hate to say crappy, but crappy. Um... Sorry, I'm just... Hmm. Oh dear. Right, um... Huh. Right, where was I? Okay. No, I don't think I've quite got it. Sorry, you just... I, I'm, I'm completely flummoxed. I, I get like that because I'm really crap sometimes. <laughs> Okay. Um, what else do we have on the desk? Rikert's desk, the spider's lair, or the abode of a harmless paper pusher. The dramatization is rubbing off on you, dear. I don't need to take those. Okay, what's he got? Non-fiction and reference books, including some well-worn Latin and French volumes. They've definitely been well read. Hmm. Okay. Let's. Okay. Michael Reichardt and Marilyn Lewis married in St. Patrick's Cathedral today. The couple meant working at the same New York government office. March 30th, 2008. <laughs> Techie, stop nagging the good people. It's all cool. Oh, good lord. Oh, man. Okay. I can do this. It's all fine. Right, do I have a file on my card? I don't have enough data points for him, but I do have a file on him. File is completed on David. Uh, August, Mickey. Uh, Certificates of recognition. No, he got. The cabinet contains personal items. Okay, is there anything in there that I haven't already rifled? Yes, Strutty is a Leo. It's password protected. To break. Yes, I know we need to break. I need to learn as much as I can about Rikert. The more possible keys I have to work. Yeah. Okay, the keyword cipher is kind of pants. The Caesar cipher. Wedding was 2008. But unfortunately, we've still got that whole LR problem. 
Well, no, I don't think I've quite got it. She does keep telling me I'm a pussycat. It's insane. Okay. That's all the search I can do. Like I can text him again. Um, I don't need to call him right now. I don't need to call him. I don't need to text. I don't need to call. Oh, yes, fish. Tell. What else do we have? Oh, that would be impressive, Fishy. Nothing to poke at in there. Okay. Riker's desk. Oh, nothing there. I wonder if there's anything more that Anvil Dexter will give me. What can you tell me? Is there anything more you can tell me? Because that would be useful. Not smug at me, mate. About Rygut, okay. yes? How long has he been married? He was married in 2008, as I recall. So he was 33 at the time. What's his interest in cryptology? Before he came here, he was a cryptologist for the CIA. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that really, 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 really helps. Fuck. Okay. What else does that give me? Cryptologist for the CIA. Oh, hello, Turing. Alistair Deniston, Charles Babbage. Oh boy, found are you? Married a woman who was a co-worker, age thirty. Okay, let's see if we can narrow it down from here. Uh, married his wife at the age of twenty-four. American cryptologist married his first wife at age 25. Eight. Benjamin Spock. Pediatrician. What? Uh, no. Alistair Deniston. That's close. Stay. I'd say Turing. He's got married to a woman. I'd say Turing was out, to be honest. <laughs> Mecky, when I read the name Variety Streamer, I just took it seriously. Studied law. I'm seeing a lot of Deniston here, basically. Um, second in command. Well, that technically, yes. He never was. Turing never was. I think we can actually lop out Turing. It means logically we can lop him. I think we're looking at Deniston here. Getting close. Um, yes, I think all her games have been original creations, Fish. A 
I'm not much in the mood to ponder Dexter's decorating choices. Anything else you can tell me? I can search for about right cards that I couldn't before. No, 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 we do not want hints. Might like hints at this stage, but we don't want hints. Nope, no, 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 no. It's a book on crypto. I can see her doing a Legion game, fish. Okay, Caesar Cipher. We know what Caesar Cipher is. Okay. I don't think... I don't think I've got enough information here. I think I need to get the hell out of his office and... Go somewhere else. Where else can I go? Where else can I go in New York? Oh, I can go home, of course. And I can go to the shop. When in doubt, let's check in with Gretchen. Hello. Hi. I got your text message about David being kidnapped. And then, of course, you never responded to the next 50 I sent. Are you okay? I did respond. I'm fine. Yeah, I got that two-word text. Thank you. Well, thank <laughs> God you weren't seriously hurt. Yes, Captain Walker and one of the most important women of this century were kidnapped. <laughs> but let's all raise a glass to the fact that I am unharmed. What? I didn't mean... Forget it. I'm not in the best of moods. I'm really sorry about David. Tell me what I can do to help. Did you talk to the U.S. Consulate or the Zurich Police? The police took a report, but I doubt they'll find him. The only person who can help now is Dexter. And me. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. I'd really like to help. Thank you. <gasps> My god, that's twice he said thank you. What is that? Turn of the century American cameo earrings with real pearls. They're not all that rare. But buyers like this sort of thing. And they weren't there earlier. Okay. I really can't think about antiques. No. I need to talk to Gretchen. Um. Why the replay? Gretchen? Yes, Malachi. Because I didn't get a particularly good stream of it last time. Um, I did it in too many chunks. And... I just wanted a nice clean one that I can put up on my YouTube channel. I need to fly to DC, and I might need to go back and forth a few times in the next 24 hours. Can you look into a charter? Really? A private charter? That won't be cheap. And that's relevant how? <laughs> right, sorry. I'm on it. I'll book it and send the info to your phone. Um, and also, Robinson, this is just one of my favourite pointing clicks. Is there anything urgent that I need to know about? As if you don't have enough to worry about. No, Malachi. Everything's fine here. I left today's newspaper on your desk in case you want to catch up. Thank you. You spent some time with Walker when he was here. Is there anything he told you that might be helpful? Maybe we should contact his family. Does he have any friends in the city? He really didn't tell me much, and I don't have any contact info for his family or friends. Right. You're really upset about this. Don't be ridiculous. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're fine. I can tell you're fine by the fact you're going I'll off on I'll talk to one. you later. All right. Okay. Let's 
let's have a look. Hang on, Reichardt's family are in town for a conference. Is that the sort of thing that could make it into the paper? Yes, it is. Gretchen put today's paper on my desk. <laughs> Everybody keeps asking if David's single, and Gretchen did flat out ask him if he was straight. Hmm. Dexter said Reichardt's parents were in town. And this conference has a Dr. Andrew Reichert as a guest speaker. That can't be a coincidence. I should see what I can find out about Dr. Andrew Reichert. Meanwhile, the stock market is just going down the pants boot. Right. Reichert's an Olympic medalist? Is he? That's impressive. I have enough data points on Reichert to do my analysis now. Ah, also, we have new numbers. March 2nd, 1994. It's 18, so potentially we've got another one for a Caesar cipher. I'd already narrowed it down to one of those guys. Bronze medal, gold medal for the decathlon. So, not Travis. Father was an MD, son of a doctor. Yeah, it's going to be Deniston. Nothing else can conforms. So, Deniston then. <laughs> Reichardt matches the profile of Alastair Deniston, who headed the British World War II Code Breakers. Group at Bletchley Park. Deniston was loyal to his organisation and was no traitor. So Reichardt, largely in the clear. Reichardt has the same pattern as Alistair Deniston, the brilliant British cryptologist. Deniston was no traitor, but I need to see what's on Reichardt's computer to be absolutely sure. Yeah, he's just patterning all over the place now, isn't he? Yeah, Bletchley. Smeared my glasses, cannot see. I'd like to go back to Bletchley Park, actually. I gather that a lot of improvement work and stuff's happened to it. And it was fascinating enough when we were there. I'm not sure, Mecky. It is a very cinematic game. So, not as many as you think. However, different conversations do happen based on your choices. I'm choosing in this play to be very open with David, for example, and tell him everything that he asks and trust him and save his life in Cairo. Um, when previous playthroughs, I've been quite reserved and not told him anything. And it's all a little bit more, there's more friction going on there. Right. Let's go back to the office. I think I've got something now. I suspect there are a lot of paths to essentially the same ending like most of your scenarios. Yeah, quite possibly, Fish. Okay, let's do this. So, we have a new Caesar cipher possibility. O L M. S. Uh, <laughs> S T. <laughs> X Y Z A. Hey. That's going to be Marilyn, isn't it? I think it is. That's going to be Marilyn. That's his wife's name. Um, Marilyn something. Be Marilyn's birthday.
It's Marilyn's maiden name. Bet. Yeah. It's. That's it. Marilyn's maiden name. So the cipher key is 1994, and I know her maiden name from my web search. It's Lewis. This time I'm encrypting a phrase, not decrypting it. So I need to subtract the date. Okay. So, back one. So we're. Hey. Boom fry. Shut up, I had to count. Leave me alone. So. Yes. Yes, I think that's correct. Now I need to try it on Reichardt's computer. And then, as soon as I meet Reichardt again, I punch him ever so hard. <laughs> Not falling for your misdirection, no. Or even your misdirection. It's password protected. No. Don't care, know what it is. That did it. There's nothing on here. Maybe there's something on that data key I found in the puzzle box. Right. So... Good. It fits. It's password protected. It's a USB stick. There's a limit. That did it. There's nothing on his desktop, but I can look at... Right. What we got? Hello. That confirms what I learned from my analysis. Reichert's historic profile, along with his notes, eliminate him as the traitor. That leaves Markham as the only other person who knew about Helene Bernadotte. Okay, so yes, Reichert was investigating the mole himself. Yeah, I like the idea of applying a cipher to a memorable password. It's one I'll have to remember. Personnel files on FITA employees. I don't have time to look at them now, but they might be a handy bargaining chip one day. I'll take this data key with me. Okay. They just steal stuff from this government agency. It's all fine. Do we go and tell Amble Dexter? No, we save the game, then we go and tell Amble Dexter. He wanted information, so at least I can clear my card. I'm fairly certain. I've got nothing else to ask him. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Right, time to go and intimidate a senator. Right, off we go. I need to go back to my apartment to pack before I head to DC. All right, got your petty. Hey. And sometimes you go to the wrong building. There we go. I need to pack for DC. I need. My oh, head. No. <sighs> <sighs> Uh, not now, damn it. Have to get to the rings. Malachi, you really need to get your ass upstairs. Oh no, Mecky. <sighs> Made it. Yeah, yeah, don't don't talk. Just lie down, strap yourself in, mate. I can only imagine what people thought when they were installing that. Oh god, that was the worst one yet. I almost didn't make it back. I don't know why, but Walker seems to be able to stop them. I can't risk another one of those while he's missing. What is happening to me? I don't know, true love, dude. I don't want to even think about having a panic attack now. I've got to keep it together until I can... 
get through this mess. It is absolute romance, Robinson. Okay, is there anything else in there that I need? I don't need any more quarters. Okay. Go to bed. Not now. I've... I need my suitcase. I'm not really thinking about fashion at the moment. Do I need anything from the closet? I should at least unpack my suitcase in fresh... Okay. I'm as ready to go as I'll ever be. Right then. I'll take it when I go to the airport. Okay. Drop Petty. Uh, there's nothing else in here, so out we go. Given the recent drama, I think I'll carry a knife with me. <laughs> okay, I was going for the scissors, but fair enough. The thing is, I've you've seen his closet, Mecky, and basically, he's got fifteen of the same suit. He varies his shirt, and that's about it. Oh, I've suddenly got this urge to say. So, to the airport, Batman. Okay. Well, my only choice is Markham's office, so... I love the party he just swapped Mr. Rector, security. I heard the news about Helene and Captain Walker. I'm sure you're as upset as I am. Dexter says you're looking for clues as to who might have kidnapped them? Yes, I am. Anything I can do to help? Please ask. Anything. Did you have them kidnapped? Are you in on it? Are you a mole? An American flag. An absolute requirement for the office of a US senator, no doubt. <laughs> that switch must control the exterior blinds. Yeah, he does have loads, Fishy. The windows are so clean they're almost mirror-like. Well, they would be if not for that glare. Uh huh. What have we got? Uh, it. Oh, hello. What's he got? The books are decorative history texts and immense compilations of law. I doubt he's read any of them. Really, Markham is not coming away from this terribly well, is he? Senator Stephen Markham. I hope he's worth all this damn trouble. Right, what you got? Dexter contacted you about Helene as soon as I told him she was Livia Drusilla. Yes. He sent me an email with her photograph. Now, that may sound careless, but we have a very secure system here, and of course, everything is password protected. Mm hmm Did you tell anyone about the email? No. No, of course not. Were you alone when the email arrived? Yes. Well, my PA was in the next room, as always. My girlfriend, Dominique. She was here that day. In fact, after I read the email, I realized it was time to break things off with her. So I did. Why didn't you mention this earlier? It's not relevant. I never told her about Helene or anything else related to Mobius. I wouldn't do that. So you read the email and then, what, called her in here to dump her? No. She came in here maybe 20 minutes after I'd read the email. I told her that our relationship was over. I just said it was for the best. And then what happened? She was in tears. She asked to have a few minutes to herself, oh, my so God. I stepped out for a short while. You left her alone? With your computer? It was only for a few minutes. And she wouldn't have looked at my computer. She was upset. Besides, I always lock it when I leave the room, and she doesn't have the password. Always? Always. Look, I want to find Helene more than anyone. But Dominique had nothing to do with this. I'm certain of that. I want to see that email. I don't think so. I told you what was in it, and I have very sensitive information on this computer. I'm sorry, but I don't see how it could possibly help. Uh-huh. You know what, mate? You left your distraught girlfriend in here, and me, the completely empathy-free zone, knows that that's a bad idea. Would you mind closing the blinds? 
The glare is distracting. Very well. Mainly because I want to know what's on your computer and I can't see it with the blinds open. Come on. There we go. I can see his screen in the window. A password prompt is up. Let's get him to talk about it again. Uh, it depends on the girls, Robinson. You don't always cuddle girls when they cry. About that email from Dexter. Yes. Uh huh. With the blinds drawn, I can see his. Right. What did you do after reading it? I looked at the photo for a while, and reread the email several times. It was hard to believe that the search for her was finally over. That I was looking at my future wife. She's a very beautiful woman. And then I emailed Dexter back, asking him to send me more details as soon as he had them. Where were you when you got the email? Right here in this office. I want to see that email. I don't think so. I told you. I'm sorry, but I don't see how it could possibly help. I want to see that. I don't think so. I'm uh, sorry, but I don't. Okay. About that email from Dexter. Yes. Uh huh. Thanks for that, sir. Got it. His password is 1470. I need to get Markham to leave the room so I can use that password. Okay. Would you mind asking your PA a question? It's probably best if you go to his office to do it. If it's just the two of you, he might answer more honestly. What do you want to know? Right. Um, are there any repairmen here this week for the end? Yeah, cool. Were there any repairmen in the office that week or the week prior? I'll ask. Having a very Mosley moment here. Thank you. Come on, Malachi, shift your bum. The computer is password protected. Of course it is. There we go. Never trust anyone with that backdrop. That's the email Dexter sent to Markham about Helene. It looks like it's been forwarded. Eh, hey, has it now? This email was forwarded. I need to find out who that email address belongs to. Right. Please. No, not context. Okay. Um, have anything sent? Can I reply to that email? That's pretty much it. What are you doing? The email from Dexter about Helene. It was forwarded from your inbox. What? Take a look. I never did that. I didn't forward it to anyone. The forward was sent 41 minutes after the email arrived. It was either you, Everett, your PA, or Dominique. My money's on the girlfriend you just dumped. <laughs> Good timing, Senator. No. I can't believe she would do that. How would she even know to check my email? It wouldn't take a genius to figure out you'd learn something that made her obsolete. I want her address. I have to find out where she sent that email. Of course, but be diplomatic, please. I don't want her so angry that she goes to the press. Excuse me? You're worried about your reputation now? Take it. Just find Helene. I intend to. Yeah, when you're getting relationship advice from Malachi, you've got issues. Seriously, dude. Have you ever met a woman? Honestly.
Yeah, but Robinson, did the girls at your girls' school wield weapons? That's the question. I allow you to question Dominic Frey, but try not to upset her and don't threaten her in any way. I'm sending two men to go with you. Oh, wacko! Great. Markham wants me babysat. This will be interesting. Right. Hello. Can I help you? Dominique? Yes. I'm Malachi Rector, and these are my dear associates. I wanted to speak with you about your relationship with Stephen Markham. Oh, is this some kind of investigation? Is he in trouble? Do you oh. want him to be in trouble? <laughs> yes. Then you'll want to talk to me. Please, come inside. How can I help you? I honestly can't see what the senator ever saw in her. Okay. Do we have a file on her? How many data points do we have? None. That table has some photos and Dominique's mail on it. I'd like to get a closer look. Her furniture is modern with no particular style. Boring. That leads to the rest of the condo. Perhaps I can convince her to give me a private tour. Yep. <laughs> there are a surprising number of mirrors in this place. Dominique must enjoy the sight of her own reflection. Probably. Dexter and Markham insist on making this difficult. It'll be a challenge to get what I want out of Dominique with them in the room. Uh huh. It's not the mirror. What? No example of the view, dear. Oh, we have a bar. A liquor bar. Dominique aspires to be the perfect hostess. Okay. If I want a drink, I should ask Dominique. Don't actually. What I do want is the various bits of information. Her furniture is modern with no particular style. Right. Let's analyze Dominique, shall we? Flush face and smiling. She's drunk, she's man hungry and finds me attractive. She's a very friendly person. She fancies him. Tend to, it seems. Genuine cameo necklace. Thinks antique jewellery makes her look classy, sentimental value. Or only wears it because of gift. Although I'm not being terribly charitable to her, but you know. Wears expensive clothing at home. Vain, always ready to be seen. Has expensive tastes. Was expecting a lot. Safely say vain because of the mirrors. Yep. Fixated on satisfying her needs and wants, she's very vain about her image. I know where I can get some cameo uh, earrings. So, Dominique. You have a lovely home. It suits you. That's very sweet of you to say. About your relationship with Stephen Markham. Yes. That went cold very fast. When did you start seeing each other? Three years ago. It's a long time for a callous brush-off, wouldn't you say? Indeed. He did indeed call her boring, Robinson. Did Stephen ever make you any promises? When a man takes a woman to bed, he is always making promises, Mr. Rector. Don't you agree? Yeah. Huh? Oh yes, absolutely. Sex is always a promise. I'm glad you agree. Not all men do. Why did Stephen end things between you? He said we had no future. That it was time to make a clean break. He can't just toss me away. Are you from some kind of ethics committee? I'm willing to testify against him. I've even considered a civil suit. What do you think? He's a fool. But I'm not sure there's anything you can do about it. Hmm. Okay. I see you have a bar. Would you mind if I had a drink? It's been a long day. It's customary to bring your hostess something to serve if this is a social call. If it's not, then you shouldn't be drinking, should you? Your logic defeats me. Okay. 
You forwarded an email from Markham's computer. Would you care to explain where that went? I don't know what you're talking about. I did nothing of the sort. Uh-huh. You're a very attractive woman. Thank you. My ego's been a bit bruised lately, so I appreciate that. I need stuff. Something. Do you mind if I look around? I thought you were here to see me. I'm right here. Ooh, uh, Jen. yes. You have a point. She's scary. She's very scary, in fact. Um, what happens if I flirt again? You seem quite young to have been dating the senator. Do you think so? Hmm. I'm flattered. Okay, let's not get me anymore. Yeah, she she she's a bit worrying to be honest. How many points do we have? Oh, we've only got the one data point. Rather. As yet. I need to step out for a moment. I think. Would it be all right if I came back later? Yes, assuming I'm available. Very gracious of you. And I run away now because you're frankly scarier than my personal assistant, and I thought she was bad. I'll be back shortly. Perhaps you'd like to hang out in your car and play Angry Birds while you wait. <laughs> nope. Sense of humor not detected. Right. I think I need to buy some alcohol, and apparently... The only place to buy booze in this entire game. Is that the shop? Yeah. So, let's go across the street. Am I going to buy her flowers as well? I could buy some flowers for Dominique, but I have the feeling she appreciates the harder goods in life. Things she can consume, wear, sell, or have sex with. Fair enough. That lounge serves liquor. I should see what they've got. <laughs> I think it's significant his place is opposite a large bar. Chat with the bartender. Do you sell liquor by the bottle? Well, if I have it in stock, you're welcome to it. What are you looking for? Something a hostess expensive. gift. Something that will impress without being overly generous. Well, I have some aged MacGuffin whiskey. The bottle's quite nice. It's forty dollars. I'll take it. <laughs> I love MacGuffin whiskey. Here you go, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that appeals. I have a MacGuffin. The idea of getting decent whiskey for forty dollars is a bit scary, though. I think they are going to be necessary. I'm going to take these earrings. I have a use for them. Really? Okay. But they're not yours, Malachi. They belong to somebody else. No, wait, hang on. Right, before heading back to Washington, let's save. Yes, I am getting increasingly paranoid in this section of the game. You're only one for a pack of hobnobs, Robinson. Good evening, Dominique. I'm sorry to intrude again, but I did remember to bring you a hostess gift. Nice. Please, come in. Thank you. And... 
I saw these antique earrings and very much wanted to see you wearing them. Ah, Alakai going for oh, it. Oh, they're lovely. You are a gentleman. Please, come sit down with me. He's a gentleman and she's gay. Don't sit down, Malachi. No. Oh, hello, the modelling's got stuck. Unless you're just showing off. How can I help you? Okay. Hey, fish, dark chocolate hobnob still count as chocolate hobnob. Uh, let's... Perhaps we could try a little of the whiskey. I'm told it's very good. Mm, it does sound tempting. I'll be right back. Shift your ass. A Dr. Angela Martin has brought a civil suit against Dominique. She claims Dominique tried to poison her. I need to find out if that's true. That'll be an interesting conversation to have. The letter is about a... I've already read it. Okay. That newspaper is quite old. I wonder where she has that. It's Dominique and a group of young doctors, or maybe residents. Dominique was... I've already... Re I've already read it. Take it. <laughs> uh, Mecky, hobnobs are hobnobs. Hobnobs are by McVitie's, and um, they are one of the greatest biscuits ever invented. Yes, the security guards are to protect the fellas. I'll put a coaster down, dear. Well, we've just found out she's been uh, sued for poisoning fish. I'm a bit concerned about this. I was looking at some of your charming photos. You worked at a hospital? Yes, St. Andrews in Baltimore. I'm a doctor of toxicology. That's an unusual field. How did you become interested in that? I was always interested in chemistry, even though my parents didn't approve. The man I dated in college got me interested in toxicology as a discipline. Okay. Much though I want to say sounds creepy. <laughs> Doctor of toxicology, excuse me while I leave the country. How admirable. I find a woman with brains fascinating. Thank you. You said your parents disapproved of your choice of studies. May I ask why? They had old-fashioned ideas about a woman's role. They're no longer in my life. Um... What did you do with them? You're better off without people like that trying to tell you what to do. I quite agree. What happened to the college boyfriend? We worked at the same hospital for a while, but he cheated on me with a co-worker. It wasn't pleasant. Oh, boy. You must have been angry, and rightfully so. I was, but we did work in a toxicology lab. Accidents happen, and karma's a bitch. But it is sweet of you to be angry for my sake. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Becky, I, I, I'm thinking the idea of cab to the airport is an excellent one. This co-worker of yours... The one your boyfriend cheated with. Was her name Dr. Angela Martin by any chance? How did you know that? You can't believe anything that woman says. She's a liar and she has no proof I did what she accuses me of doing. I believe you, of course. 
I should have enough information now to complete my analysis of Dominique. Psycho! Psycho kid. Okay, that's this I've always had a weakness for women with dark hair. Hmm. I quite agree. Your coloring is striking. Uh <laughs> Yeah, so so this analysis then. Scaring me. Dr. Angela Martin teaches toxicology at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. She's a resident doctor with a lab. She's moderately scary. Right, poisoned arrival. Anne Boleyn plotted to poison Henry's first wife, Aragon. Lucretia Borgia. Oh, wacko! Had a ring with poison hidden in it to drug the drinks of her enemies. Medea. Oh my god. Oh, she's an absolute class act, isn't she? Yeah. My, my money's on uh, either Lucretia Borgia or Medea. It's more scared if it's Medea, to be honest. Uh, we know who she is. Elizabeth. Oh my god! <laughs> Elizabeth Bathory. Obsessive envy of youth and beauty led her to torture, murder, and bathe in the blood of hundreds of young women and girls. Um, age and jealousy of her husband leaving her for another woman led to the murder spree from which she's most known, including the murders of her children. No. Her divorce from her politician husband ended bitterly, with her children being taken from her. Went on to viciously denounce him. Oh my god, what a set of charmers. Okay. Don't think it's Marie Antoinette, because she only appears in one of those data points. She bored. Don't be Elizabeth Bathory, because she again doesn't appear in data points. To be frank, Anne Boleyn, I think, is out because she's... Oh, right then. Um, Lucretia Borgia, ring with poison head in it, yes, she poisoned Glauque, woman Jason left her for. Very jealous person. Lucretia Borgia has no data as to whether she's jealous, good lord. Oh my god, she's my dear. Yikes. <laughs> Dominique's history and personality cast her in the archetypal role of the woman scorned, jealous, vindictive, arrogant, and both literally and figuratively poisonous. Typified by the figure from Greek mythology, Medea, the woman scorned reacts poorly to betrayal, well that's a polite way of putting it, especially from her romantic partner. She will react violently, though not always overtly, and in ways intended to harm her former lover as deeply as possible. Though these actions often leave the object of her hatred untouched while those around him suffer. The elevated sense of betrayal often comes from having chosen estrangement from her own family in the pursuit of what she believed true love. Oh boy. Maybe you should ask your friends to step out so we can have some privacy. I wish I could. Maybe we could talk in your bedroom. All right. Follow me. Malachi? Are you insane? We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> I doubt it. Please let me save the game. Alone at last. Isn't that the saying? This is what you wanted, isn't it? It is definitely what I wanted. Hmm. <laughs> I'd really like to enjoy you. But I'm not convinced you're not up to something. Oh, I'll convince you. Excuse me while I just do this. Save. Indeed, save. I have a knife. 
It's a pair of scissors. Perhaps they're for cutting off a visitor's balls. <laughs> I already have a sharp object with me, if I need it. Okay. Uh, I think I need to ready an item. I don't think this is going to go well for me, you know. I think we should get to know each other intimately. Ah! Oh, shit. Get off her. Rap. Damn it. Guarantee your privacy first. Okay, let's just let's, let's some um, restore the game, shall we? Okay. Lock the Let's make sure we won't be interrupted. All right. Now, holding the gun a knife to her throat, please. Because this strikes me as the most sensible thing you could do. Oh, we're into peril music, guys, again. I think we should get to know each other. Intimately. What exactly are you planning to do from there, Malachi? <laughs> Apart from the knife thing. You okay in there, Miss Freud? Yes, I'm fine. We just got a little loud. Such a good liar. Now, you're going to tell me where you forwarded that email about Helene. Or I swear to God, I will leave you with a face no man will ever look at again. No! Please! I'll tell you anything. Uh-huh. Douglas Wilde Carter. He's behind the kidnapping. He promised Markham's girlfriend, Dominique, that she'd marry Markham if she spied for him. Dominique saw the email you sent to Markham about Helene. She forwarded it to Carter. He has to be behind the kidnapping and those attempts on Walker's life. Carter, he's a powerful man. But how does he know about Mobius? And why would he want to prevent Markham from becoming president? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. You must have a file on him. Yes. Does he have an historic match? Not that we've discerned. Of course, my statisticians aren't as good as you are. Some traitor, perhaps. Benedict Arnold? Send everything you have to my phone. Done. I'm going to go see him right now. No, let us deal with it. <laughs> you don't just barge in on a man like that. We'll need to make a case. Do a covert ops. Fine. Do your investigation, and call me. Mr. Rector! <laughs> At least you know about Mobius. Does he know maybe he read the back of the box? Yeah. Do we have anything on the guy? Yes, we do indeedy. Billionaire, venture capitalist, and major external factor in American politics in the 90s and 2000s. Widely said to have bought the presidential races for Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, there's speculation his donations will be a major determining factor in the next presidential race as well. Carter both came from money and came into money, benefiting greatly from the wealthy family and connections of his wife, Lauren Smith Waldorf. The couple has two daughters, Georgia Carter Jameson and Jacqueline Carter. Right. Mr. Rector to see you, sir. Malachi Rector. Dominique said you had something you wanted to speak to me about. I do. I have a proposition for you. I'm listening. I'm afraid it's very sensitive. I need to speak with you alone. Court is my employee. I trust him implicitly. I'm sure you do. But I don't. Sorry, but I can't risk it. Very well. Court, please excuse us. Well, what do you have to say, Mr. Rector? Well, 
Robinson, I think that's kind of the point about the whole Mobius theory. It's all about recurring patterns of behaviour. Right. Have we... Judging by the rest of this room, those are custom-made pool cues. Mr. Rector, I thought you came here to... Yes. <laughs> Sorry. For once, somebody calls him out on it. I can't analyse him. Really? Okay. To be blunt, Mr. Carter, I'd like to work for you. I'm done with Fita. They've lost my trust. Interesting. What makes you think you have a skill I need? You knew enough about me to have me attacked in Cairo, so you must know I'm the savant. And you appear to be very interested in Mobius technology. I am indeed. But I'm not clear on exactly what services you can provide as the savant. Can you explain? I can identify the patterns. My knowledge of history is extensive, and I seem to have a certain intuition that's hard to explain. Hmm, I'm intrigued. Perhaps you could give me a demonstration. Okay. I can do it right now, in fact. On you. Be my guest. Okay. Perhaps you can tell me something about yourself. Oh, no, Mr. Rector. That would be cheating. I want to see what you can do without my help. I know you were behind the kidnapping of Helene Bernadotte and my security guard, Mr. Walker. I want Walker back. Why should I care what you want, Mr. Rector? Because you need my skills. Do I? Okay. Right. Judging by the rest... Right, we've got the custom made pool. What have we got? Carter was a major general in the U.S. Army. Carter was a ma Oh, okay. Carter doesn't hold an office, yet he's clearly cultivated many political connections. This has to represent a lifelong passion. Okay, he's a kingmaker. Carter doesn't hold an... Wedding photos. Ugh, creepy. This photo is recent, and the younger daughter has no escort and no wedding or engagement ring. She appears to be unattached. Okay. Photo. A custom bar complete with an HD flat screen. I believe this officially makes this the man cave of the house. Could be. The pool table is an exquisitely restored antique. Definitely a billionaire's plaything. What else do we have? Yes. Right, now I can analyze him. Unwavering and confident expression. Proud and intelligent man. That's what we're getting straight off. Strong, easy posture. Assumed to have, accustomed to having command of a room. Wears a back brace. Had good posture drilled into him. Oh, this is a guy who thinks he owns everything. Including that cardigan. Practicing pool in his own game room. Pool is a metaphor he doesn't like to lose. Wants to have the best man cave. Making up for an insufficient childhood. Okay, Mackie, good night. Have a good night. Carter's proud, intelligent, and cunning. He's built an image of power he completely embodies, and he hates to lose. Oh, this is a safe person to be pissing around with, isn't it? I think I know enough about Carter to do my analysis. Uh, you know, Douglas Carter, footy book. Must have been the uh, quite an enormous bill for the wedding of his oldest daughter, Georgia Carter. So, okay, so she married a media mogul. It's a big, big thing. 
Right, let's have him. Two daughters, older one married to a media mogul, younger one unmarried. That's Woolsey. Uh, had a son and a daughter. That could work. Richard Neville. Oh, also called the Kingmaker. You know what? I'm just going to assume it's him because that's ridiculous. Otto von Bismarck. Oh. No. Eleven children. Nope. There we go. Straight in. Henry the Sixth on the throne, forced Edward into exile. Yeah, yes, it's him. Straight off. Match with Richard Neville, sixteenth Earl of Warwick, also called the Kingmaker. A rich, influential man, he used his military success, wealth, and network of connections to become one of the most important men in Britain in his day. Putting two kings on the throne of England and marrying his daughter to a future king. I wonder if this means he's planning on putting that young media mogul on in the White House. That'll go well. I know who you are. I'm listening. You're a kingmaker like Richard Neville, the 16th Earl of Warwick. You married your oldest daughter to a media mogul. That kind of control over the press is critical to a kingmaker in this day and age. But your younger daughter, she must marry a politician. And not just any politician. But THE politician. You're not trying to destroy Senator Markham. Not the man who could be the greatest president of all. No, you want him in the family, where you can be his puppet master. That's why you wanted to get rid of Livia Drusilla, so that your daughter can take her place. Forgive me, Mr. Rector, but that's a little frightening. The best weapons are always frightening. So do you want me in your employ or not? Name your terms. Five million a year and walk of the least or walk of the least unscathed. I want Captain Walker returned, unscathed. Is that all? No financial demands? We can talk about money later. I'm not convinced about Walker. He's too loyal to the rule book and the flag. He'll be trouble. I'll keep Walker on a tight leash. That's not your problem. Hmm. Don't misinterpret this, Rector, but you're a beautiful man. I believe you can keep Walker on a leash. Very well, but I'm not a fool. I'm going to need proof that you're willing to switch sides. What can you offer that will convince me? How about... This data key has a file on FITA employees. It's yours if you give me what I asked for. Yes, this is quite acceptable. We have a deal. Okay. Captain Walker is still alive, and I've requested that he be kept that way. <laughs> Mine. One-handed texting I wouldn't skills. get your men excited if I were you. The location in Qatar has already been sent, and Dexter knows I'm here. What makes you think I'll let you walk out of here? You really think I care that Dexter knows you're here? You're the kingmaker. You tried to kill Captain Walker because he's presumably my moral compass for some such nonsense. But the savant... The savant you want to control, you want that very much. If I can't control you, no one else will. You've read my profile. I have no loyalty. Fita does not control me. They're merely an expedient means to an end at the moment. I would have been more expedient. I can keep him alive. Now he'll be dead before anyone can get there. But you already gave your instructions. 
and that secured phone is your only quick line of communication with them. Why wouldn't I simply text them again and change my mind? Go ahead. <laughs> Nicely done, Malachi. <laughs> That's dedication for you. Jesus Christ, you're insane. Till we meet again, Mr. Carter. I hate to have to say it, because this is the last chapter. But I think I am going to have to call it there for tonight, because I'm shattered. So, I will put a fairly short stream together. Um, imminently. Yeah, I had a feeling, Fish, that you'd probably be dropping as well. Um, but no, I have work in the morning, so I kind of need to go to bed. So, I hope you're all enjoying it. And I, I can hardly recommend the Phoenix Online, Jane Jensen stuff. Um, Cog this and Cognition are extremely good. And of course, the other one that's not Phoenix Online, but is Jane Jensen. Um, is grey matter. So, of sort of the more modern end of point and clicks, relatively speaking, there's some really, really good stuff kicking around. So, thank you very much. And uh, I will bid you a good night. It's been a cracking dream. Thank you very much for joining me. <laughs>